podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. I'm going to go ahead and beat up Danny Garcia. Hey, Daddy, this a dollar beat. You didn't take out that green jacket because I just took your bill. It's fly, You can't baby. even set out an arena. Don't read your paper. You can fight me. So sit down somewhere. Sit down somewhere. Sit down somewhere. You will never, you will not be fighting on pay if you want for me. Hey, Daddy, this a dollar beat. Boxingboys.com. No matter what nobody say, man. Spirit, can't nobody fuck with me, man. You know, I can't be fucked with, you know. Whether you pay to see me win mm. or you pay to see me lose, mm. you're gonna pay. Look, if the kids still gotta eat, I don't have to watch, you know, any footage of a, a fighter. I mean, because I'm Floyd Mayweather, everybody gotta watch me. I knew eventually I was gonna have to fight Oscar. I feel like um, I feel like he was straight up and down, no really no special effects. Boxingwoods.com. How can Canelo have the biggest deal? Your, your deal is for 300 million. And I made I made 350 million just in one fight. And you're fighting on the app. Boxingwoods.com. I'm a king, okay? Mm-hmm. I eat a feast. But every time I eat, I eat a feast. And when I get up from the table, I don't give a fuck who get the leftovers. At the end of the day, follow my green friend. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. I am your host, Nesta Gibbs, and uh, I'm joined alongside a couple of co-hosts hailing from around the globe, across the pond, and all the way in Texas. We're going to be talking this week's action, October 9th. Las Vegas ESPN, Navarrete defends his title. Also, we're going to be discussing Danny Garcia attempting to take on the unified welterweight champion Earl Spence. Their fight was planned for November. It is now officially moved to December 5th at the AT&T Stadium where they will have fans in attendance. So... Lot to report on, gentlemen. What's going on, man? Welcome back. What up? What up? up? Committee. It's the return. What's up, of man? The hoodie, man. The return of Word. the hoodie. Oh, Yo, man. people said they like a uh, hoodie midi. Hoodie. They said hoodie midi was real. You know, he was, hoodie midi looks like he's about to. He drop was grimy. A verse. He, he was getting that nest on the last show. They said they like hoodie midi. I'm getting better, man. I had like a, a rough week. Like you know, feeling a bit sick. I'm getting a little bit better. Loads of sleep, and I woke up to some news, man. Like you know, I woke up to the news that you know. The fight is getting pushed to December 5th. Well, actually, I'm like, I, I went to sleep to that news and then I woke up to a lot of comments, you know. So I'm sure, you know, we've, a lot of people will have a lot to say about it. And it makes sense, man. You know, if we can have people in attendance, yeah, why not? And uh, yeah, like, I, I'm liking it. The only thing is, like, there's a little bit of a clash, right, for the fight fan. Because if you want to watch both fights, how is it going to work if you want to watch the uh, uh, Campbell versus Ryan, uh, yep. Ryan, Ryan Garcia. Garcia, right? So uh, it's on the same night. But hey, I mean, we've done that before. We managed to juggle between different cards, so that won't be any different. So it's all good. Yeah, no, you're definitely right. It would have to be some sort of... You can only pick one to watch live, essentially. Uh, you know, but you're going to have to watch them both. Like, as a fight fan, I don't see how you miss either fight. Uh, and I know the cards are starting to shape out a little bit for each, um, you know, card, uh, Garcia, Campbell, respectively, and uh, Spence and Garcia. But the thing is, is that those two fights alone are, like, worth the price of admission, you know what I mean? Like, just to watch. Like, however you decide to watch, just to watch, you know, live, whatever. But... You know, you're not gonna be able to do it. I, I think that it shows the power of boxing here towards the end. They're really trying to make a splash. You know, promoters are doing what they can, but um, ultimately, it's just a weird situation. You know, it's really hard to 
put a yeah. put put your finger on why it happened like that. But f- fewer dates though too, right? Yeah, f- fewer dates. But no matter how you just spin it, like I don't think anyone will argue that you know the uh, Spence Garcia is the is the much bigger fight, right? I mean, the, oh yeah, uh, there is an attraction with Ryan Garcia with the casual and stuff like that. But like, come on, man, Spence and Garcia is the fight that. You know, if you have to choose, definitely, you will have to go with the uh, the, the um, Spence versus Garcia. Sorry, I'm I heard curious as to second. no, no, yeah, I heard that too. Uh, I'm curious as to see or, or hear who people would think is the bigger favorite on that day between those two. Like, it's such a weird thought; it just popped in my head, but it's like. Oh. Favorite in terms of the matchup, I think yeah. both matchups are, are tight, right? Yeah, so, they are. They're good matchups, yeah. but that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, which one? It, like, which one would you be more surprised if they lost on fight night? Like, I want to say Garcia. I don't know. I want. No, I mean, I, I would be say more Spence. surprised if it loses. Right? <laughs> saying Garcia yeah. doesn't say much. Which Garcia? Yeah. Oh yeah. Good <laughs> point. Yeah. I think Spence. If Spence loses, that would probably for me be the biggest shock that night. But I feel like Garcia's in a Closer fight, you get what I'm saying? Ryan. Well, I guess that makes Ryan, sense. Yeah, Ryan Garcia. Sorry, King, 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 King Ryan. Are you? Do you? Do you, like you know? Obviously, you represent the UK. So, like, are you guys over there? Do you believe Ryan, um, Campbell's gonna win, or is he looked at as the B side in this? Is he All looked right, at let, as let, the favorite? Let, How are you guys viewing him? Is he a favorite? Is he a B side? What is he here? Let me speak for for myself first. Like I definitely think that uh, Luke Campbell for me is the favorite because of you know the the stage that has been on before. If you want to just look at it logically uh, and resume wise and all that, he's a guy who's been in there with Lomachenko. You know whatever you want to say, those were like you know losing efforts at a title, but they was losing effort against like people that we consider good, right? So. Linares, Lomachenko, and, you know, he's the most seasoned, and he's also a guy that has been there and done it on the amateur scene, right? So for me, he is the favorite. Now, that doesn't mean that he's the A-side, like the A-side in terms of, like, bringing all the uh, the money to the table, all the clouds and all those things. It's probably Ryan Garcia, right? That's the reason why the fight is in the U.S., and that's the reason why, uh, yeah, he has to travel there. Uh so I won't be shocked if like uh, Campbell win, and I, you know, I want to think that you know most UK fans think the the same way. I don't think many of them will necessarily know about uh, uh, Ryan Garcia or King Ryan because you have to be a real hardcore fan to watch him, right? Because he's been on like lesser card, right, and at four o'clock in the morning, right? So uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that most of the UK will see Luke Campbell as a, as a favorite going into the fight. Mm. Uh oh, sucks to be Ryan. Then we got two super chats real quick, and uh, you guys could get back to it. Looking like Henry is back, and he says, "Finally, Henry has come back to the Thursday TBV." Ness, know what I claim? Dipset, so whoop. Say, let's start it off. If Davis wins and Loma wins, they need to fight. Then we got another one from Boston Jared. It says, making a fighter cut way through the holidays might not be a good idea, especially one who's had weight issues in the past. Who are we talking about here? Are we talking Earl? Who's he talking about? Probably Spence he's talking about. Mm. And Spence has been in shape since the beginning of the pandemic, you know, so it's going to take some true discipline now to have this fight pushed back to December and to not, you know, get carried away. Cheaty, cheat, cheat. Yeah, word, word. No, you're definitely right. But I am glad, though, that we're going to be able to have fans in attendance. Um, This marks two significant fights in Texas happening, um, you know, in the last quarter of December. And I mean, I'm sorry, last quarter of uh, 2020, you know, um, you have Spence Garcia, obviously, and then uh, Leo Santa Cruz and um, Tank. And so I don't know. I mean, they're finding ways around it. I think that's good. You know, I think that bodes well for some of the other fights that maybe we haven't gotten because of, you know, lack of fan attendance and not being able to depend on that economic boost. But 
ultimately, you know, they're starting to kind of play out like we thought, you know, we, we had been saying Texas could be a spot, a hot spot for a while. And it just makes sense. You know, Spence goes back into a place that he's familiar with. Um, and we'll see the drawing power. I think that it's going to be really interesting because while it is, you know, pandemic season and, and people are struggling at the same time, uh, there are a lot of people that are really thirsty to go and see a live professional event period, but bout, you know, boxing fans have definitely been chamoring. I, you know, I see it all the time on Twitter, people wanting to go back to live fights and, you know, this is going to be their chance to show up big for Spence. I wonder when the complaining is going to start. You know, uh, Andre Ward fought a few times in his hometown before they started complaining and not wanting Ward to fight there anymore, saying he's getting home court advantage. I wonder, is Earl such a darling that these things won't come into play? For Terrence Crawford, the same happened. You know, oh, he's getting home court advantage whenever he took guys in Nebraska or, you know, yeah, Omaha. So it's like... You know, are they going to say that about Earl or is it okay because it's Jerry's world and it's the Cowboys stadium or is it just because it's Earl? Like, how's that work? You know, I know you lived through that Ward era. People didn't like Ward to be in his hometown as much as they love an Earl to be in his hometown. Well, they didn't like Ward anyway. People had a problem with Ward for a lot of different reasons and it was unfair to him. You know, people treated him unfairly and, and, and there's going to be people that say, you know, talk about his demeanor and, and the way he was towards the latter end of his career. But he took so much abuse anyway. So I think it's just a double standard that you see with people that are considered fan friendly. And I'm not talking about like action inside, but just like people that you resonate towards. You know what I mean? Like there's these fighters that for whatever reason, people resonate towards, you know, in good or bad ways. And, you know, and then there's guys like Mayweather and Wilder who, you know, they draw huge fan ratings because people love to love them and love to hate them. Um, Spence is to me, he feels like a captain America type of guy, just the Olympics. And, you know, he, he had that chip on his shoulder and he's in the 147 pound division, which hel uh, held the last great boxing American fighter in Floyd Mayweather. So there's just like a lot of value that goes into him. Who, um, who by the way, obviously, you know, blessed them with the endorsement. Remember when he, yes. when he kind of, told the world that Earl was so good and he said that that Keith needed to fight Earl. Yes, and that started the whole Bro Broner drama. Um, Broner wasn't the it guy in the camp anymore. And so, uh, yeah, you just have that kind of stuff. And then, you know, versus Ward, where guys just didn't like him. I mean, they, they didn't appreciate him. So, you know, there, there's a big difference right there. But we got another um, – Super chat coming from PG Daryl says, y'all coming to Dallas? Yo, Ooh, we trying we, to come to Dallas. We, we trying to come to Dallas. We definitely well, are already right talking. We already talking. We trying to do a border war season nine out there, man. That's a big, big fight. I guess if, to turn, get a quick turnaround then. I mean, we got so many fighters in, in Texas. It makes sense. Uh, but, but, but we could also think about uh, an appreciation night. Uh, on that date. I mean, look, it's December. I know it's Christmas, so it's a lot of thinking has to go on. Why not both? No, listen, because uh, of Christmas and the holidays, that's why you oh, got yeah, to wonder true, what, what people could and can't do. Then we got the pandemic. But in terms of timing, <laughs> perfect. In terms of location, perfect. In terms of, you know, big fight to be, you know, built up our event around, beautiful. I, I, I love it. I wouldn't, you know, I would love to get with you guys for October. Like I said, in the Border Wars chat, if you're privy to be in there, you already know we're already counting and, 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 and trying to see what we can do in Texas for December 5th since we got that many Border Wars fighters out in Texas. But, yeah, I mean, I think this is fantastic news just to stay on subject, man. Um, shout out to whoever was involved in getting this done. You know, I got I to gotta stick my finger in the wound and say... Uh, you know, we reported that Mike Coppinger has been told or feels like Crawford's going to leave. He needs to hurry up and leave. Like, dude, they literally didn't want to pay Kell Brook to fight you. They said they couldn't pay you. They asked you to take a pay cut. They said they couldn't do pay-per-view. They couldn't find you a viable opponent. Spence is fighting in Texas in front of a crowd in Jerry's world on pay-per-view with a top five opponent. I don't understand these Bud Crawford fans trying to defend this shit. Like, it's time to go. It's time to go. I'm 33 years yeah. old, and everyone else is getting what I want. 
That's what I want. I wanted to fight Danny a few years ago. When his father said something about my hair, Ooh, I'm not going to repeat good, it. I wanted point. to fight Danny. You understand? I wanted to fight Thurman. I was trying to fight everybody. No, that was Floyd that said that part. But yeah, you know, um, he got to do something, bro. Like, Spence is literally taking all the way over. He's taking yeah. all no, the way he is. over. He is. No, he, he he definitely is. And 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 you know, look, I don't know how true these rumors are. Like, like I, all of a sudden now we're starting to get the Ryan Garcia rumors coming out. Um, I'm sure you've seen him on Twitter floating around or whatever. Uh, you know, that 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 that, that relationship's coming to an end pretty soon too. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, it's out there. People have been speculating for the last, I don't know, forty eight hours or so. Um, but but regardless, you're absolutely right. At least here's the thing. At least Ryan doesn't have to like stare at the person on the opposite side and have him achieve all the things. Like it's not the same scenario. You know, Ryan Garcia is much earlier in, early in his career versus Bud who's staring at exactly what you said, Spence being able to get and, and receive and achieve the things that right now, Bud is just incapable of receiving, not because he's not the best because I think he is the best in the world. Uh, because you know he's he's in a raw he's in a raw situation raw deal. Yeah, Mitty, anything to report on Congo, man? I thought I seen that he might be back already. Yeah, I mean, it will. Well, he's trying to work on a date for November or December, and he is in training. But like, there's nothing confirmed right now, as far as I know, right? So, uh, but yeah, like, just training, taking over getting ready just in case the uh, anything gets formalized or confirmed for November, December. But that's what he wants to do. November, December, he wants to be out. A few Shout, out. Shows there, Shout so out the WBO knows. international champ out there. Holding it down, Chris Congo, man. Uh, hopefully he gets a shot. Speaking of welterweights... I have put it, in it a, won't be anything big, though, right? So it won't be anything big for November, December. It'll probably be something domestic, right? So Yeah. Speaking of welterweights, I have put in the chat, I don't know if you guys got to see it, that Maurice... Oh, we got 11 minutes before we get Kevin Cunningham, the trainer, uh, Erickson Lubin on, um, about Jamel Herring of the Brian Bo Mac McIntyre gym and camp who claims that Josecito Lopez turned down the offer because he wasn't happy with the money that was being offered for him to face Maurice Hooker. According to Heron, he wasn't happy with the money. Did you guys see the tweet in the pre-pro? I did. I did see the tweet in the pre-pro. Um, I was going to put it on the notes, but I didn't have the time. Um, yeah, what would you think? I mean, like, I feel like it, it's hard to say one way or the other because it's coming from Herring. And, you know, I'm sure he has a lot of inside info. It's just that something like that is a tough thing to report without, like, having some sort of confirmation from somebody in the team. So it is not happy with what? With the, the money? With the money? From? Yes. That's what Herring was uh, alluding to the other in the in his tweet that Ness put in the pre-pro, to fight Hooker, that he's yeah, to, uh, yes, Jamel to Herring Hooker. is insinuating that the money offered to Josecito Lopez to face Hooker wasn't enough for Josecito, and that he turned it down because he felt the money wasn't enough. Which I actually like, you know. Not only am I reporting what Herring is saying, but I also want to give my thoughts on the fact that Herring isn't trying to throw shade. You know, he could have worded that. Uh, Strictly different. different. Yeah, yeah. He could have ordered that but, completely different, but he, he he kept it fair and neutral by saying, you know, he turned it down because he wasn't happy with the money. Okay. But, um, yeah. yeah, man, I mean, look, any final thoughts before we wrap up the Spence Garcia, move on to uh, at least the first weekend's fights? No, I think, uh, I think I'm good. I mean, I just, I'm happy that they move the date to accommodate fans, you know, for no other reason than to accommodate fans. And, and, and I'm pretty sure based on how much longer lockdown to this degree lasts, this isn't the last time we see this, like a major fight get, you know, moved to a date that helps 
in some way, shape, the or form. economics. Yes. Absolutely. Mitty? No, I mean, like, no, no, no final thoughts for me. Like, you know, that, that makes sense. So, you know, we, we all agree with that, and I'm sure, like, fight fans are happy, right? So everyone is dying to just go and just, uh, you know, finally be able to see good fights uh, in attendance, actually, instead of just watching on uh, on TV. So, yeah, like, there's nothing much uh, much more to say. Even if it clashes, that, that's not a problem. Like, and the, the clash won't even have an impact on, on that fight, I believe, because that's the bigger and, bet, and better fight. So, it's all good. All right. October 9th, Las Vegas ESPN this Saturday. Live on ESPN, we're going to be watching uh, Emmanuel Navarrete defend his title versus Ruben Villa in a 12-round vacant WBO featherweight title. Uh, look, I don't know anything about Ruben. I'm going to say that Navarrete, you know, is an entertaining fighter. Uh, I'm excited for his return. I watched his bubble fight. He was a little heavy. Hopefully, you know, he's been able to get that weight off. I believe that was a non-title fight. It wasn't even sanctioned, um, if you check box right. But I love that he's got the swag. I don't know if you're watching the picture I'm screen sharing right now. Um, I just, I, I love the story of boxing. I love when a guy, you know, can come from a, a third world country and change his life with his fists, man. And now look at him, right? Like, he looks like a little model, you know, he's he's got all the swag in the world. He's got the WBO raised in the air, and I'm just happy for him. You know what I mean? I'm happy for him and anyone that can leave, live that dream that he is living. That being said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick him to win because I have no clue who Vijay is, even though um, Brandon Maurice is saying upset alert. You know, I don't know. If my, Brandon, if that were true, you probably wouldn't want to keep that to yourself. Sure. So that you could keep winning, champ. Uh, I think like a, a, a lot of people are just like trying to send people astray in those comments yeah. on, <laughs> on Patreon, right? So, so there's a lot of uh, of strategy. But saying that, I did hear for not just from uh, uh, from Brandon that there's a lot of people that are believing in Villa. I, I you know I won't be able to tell you except from reporting what I heard, right? Uh, they believe in his uh, in his skills and his pedigree. Like apparently, he's like a, a very decent boxer. Uh, but I won't be able to tell you that I can confirm all that or just make it my opinion. So I'm also picking Navarrete for the same reason again. Like so, when you have to choose between someone that you know and is accomplished and you don't have much information on the other guy, uh, sometimes you might be wrong, but you have to go with what you know, right? So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's good, and I'll be happy to be introduced to to Villa. But for now, I'm going to go with what I know and what I've seen, you know? Yeah. Uh, listen, Ruben has a really uh, in, a pretty impressive amateur pedigree. Uh, he's been in there with a lot of uh, guys. Um, you know, Shakur, uh, right off the top of my head, just because I saw it recently uh, on Twitter. Um, you know, the, he's been in there with a lot of, like, really top quality guys. The thing is, is Navarrete is a different animal for me. I think that the weight cut that had been going on with him, he hadn't had a couple successful weight cuts, and those have been the fights where he kind of dragged. And even in those fights, he was just, you know, vicious, and his punches were uh, thudding, and, and, and they stayed with you. That's the biggest part to me that I see in Navarrete, you know, is watching fights as, as long as I have. You know, I can't break down things super technical, you know, like a, like MIDI can or, or something like that. But what I can tell you is what I've seen before. And there's this quality in punchers where they hit you and you see that it stays with the, with their opponent. Navarrete has that kind of punch that, that he hits you with and, and he leaves a lasting impression with the opponent from round to round as he goes. And it's this destruction that he plans of you. Uh, for me, Navarrete is winning this fight. Uh, I do like Ruben Villa. I, I hope that, you know, it, it's a close fight. Uh, he They have a thing on him on Showtime, or they did before. Uh, it was like a day in the camp or something like that. I, I don't even know, remember what it was. But, you know, he's, he's he seems like a good kid. And uh, I hope it's a good fight. That's really all I hope for is that it's a good fight. And it's a good enough performance that Navarrete excels. And we want to see Ruben Villa back. 
Yeah, I don't know who's Ruben. I'm not going to fall for the chat mind, Jedi mind tricks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it's all about, like, it's all about uh, what is done in the amateurs, right? That, that's what we have most of the times uh, with uh, young fighters that are just bursting onto the scene with, like, loads of, like, talent from the, from the amateurs. So if you are the person that usually says, uh, you know, amateur is completely different and stuff like that, uh, then you probably won't like that. But the reality is that you don't know, man. Like, uh, an amateur who's good might be the goods in a professional also. You, we've seen that with uh, with Vasil Lomachenko, for example. We've seen that with the, the likes of the Rigos and all that. Uh, so so we, we don't know. Right? We're going to have to see him against an Avarete to to determine if he passes that test, right? So, and if he's that guy. But I, until I see that, I don't know, man. Like, they, so they capping for Ruben. Don't don't nobody fall for that, man. No, but you you can't you can't lie though. You can't lie. If the guy won like national championship, like that's something that you can't make up, right? So nah, I hear it's you. a fact. It, it, it's a fact. It's there. No, so look, it must look be I love it that must you brought up nationals because I'm gonna be you know talking crazy um, about a kid who's 0 and 0, who's got 10 national wins. And that's all I'm going to base his talent off. So I get what you're saying. You know, anybody yeah. that knows Ruben and knows his, his background in terms of amateur respect to you and respect to him. I cannot confirm or deny. So, you know, no, that's true. I hear you, but, but I, I, yeah, we're going to see who also, actually picked him. I, I, I was also told like the, the U S national championship is uh, tougher than the Olympics. So it must be really good. So if you, if you win the, U.S. national championship, according to a few people, or at least one person that told me that you know it's a it's a harder thing to do than winning the Olympics. So it, it must be really good. I'm gonna go with that. Word. Yeah. Um, so on the undercard, that, that's the main. Yeah, on the undercard, you're gonna have uh, Joseph Adorno's back in action. But who's he fighting? Because I'd never got to see who he was fighting. Well, he was supposed oh. to fight uh, Avery Sparrow, man. Avery Sparrow. Yes. Poor yeah, Avery, Avery Sparrow. Sparrow, bro. First he gets a Ryan Garcia fight. That doesn't happen. Imagine his career, right? It was like Hank Lundy, and that's when he broke out 9-0. and Beat Lundy. Everybody's watching. Gets the Ryan fight. Has a warrant. Goes to jail. Next fight was a big fight. Who'd he fight that we seen him not do well? You guys don't remember his last fight? He didn't do too well. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was somebody it was against... slightly better than him in, in, in boxing wise. It was. Uh, I'll, I'll Google. Bro. Damn it, Nova. No, no. Hey, was it Abraham Supernova? Was it? I don't know. That was one thirty. Let's know. check. Let's check. But the point is, poor Sparrow, man. He hasn't been able to, you know, get that. Yeah, Abraham Nova. There you go. So he hasn't. Really, you know, it's just. You know, look, he could have got this fight, and now look, you know, I don't know, man. Poor kid, bro. Ten and two, only three KOs, and uh, he's been given some opportunities, but the just don't pan out for him. Well, uh, they said a daughter was staying on the card, though. So who's he gonna fight? I don't know. Will it still be ten rounds? Maybe we have a super not. chat. I don't Depending think on who we it got is. To I'm sorry to cut you. I, I, I seen you communicating with Supermax. I thought maybe. You were gonna get to it, but he did put a super chat here. I actually wanted you to get to it because I, 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 it seems like some baseball talk. I'll do stick to talk, stick talk boxing. Who says, "Yo, all right"? And then yours is for uh, Big Super Max. Super Max says, "Shout out to the Astros four straight L A L C S hashtag hate on it." H Town, yeah, I just saw him close it out. What a series, man! Home runs galore. That was awesome. That was like they were like big time heavyweight fights. So that's what, what is, that's what watching baseball was like the last three days. What is ALC days. or whatever? Uh, that means they go to the finals to play the winner of the Yankees and Rays, and then the winner goes to the World Series for the AL. You know they're split up AL NL, so they're going to the AL championship, and right now. The Rays are up ahead in the Yankees. But, uh, yeah, dude, they were hitting home runs galore. It was seriously like watching boxing at one point. Like, oh, bro, oh, I read oh, that like, so ooh, fast that I thought it was – it says something like about the ACL. I'm like, damn, did the Ash, a bunch of Astros tear their ACL? That's I'm like, let me let Mario oh, read this. You know, but uh, – Don't you yeah. put that – don't you put that – 
curse on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> he doesn't say curse. I forgot what he said. Let's yeah. go undercard. My boy is back, TDK. If you didn't yes. know, the Dominican kid. Yes, sir. That's the nickname. TDK is back to get the TKO or the KO. And I'm talking to none other than Elvis <laughs> Rodriguez. You know, when he wins, he does the Elvis guitar pose, you know. He's from the Dominican Republic, and he is looking like he's panning out. He's looking like the goods. So far, so good. He takes a slight step up in this fight with Cameron Carell. I don't know why his manager feels this is a step up. Uh, I never heard of Cameron, but, you know, when when this happened, he like, yo, they wanted him to step up. Here we go. I'm like, okay, all right. I don't know who's Cameron. But, you know, maybe he, you guys know him or, you know, and if not you, the listeners, can anyone tell us anything about Cameron Carell? Almost sounds like, you know, uh, Superman's son named Kyle. Right? <laughs> no, I, I can't tell you anything about him. You know, uh, I'm hope, I was hoping that you guys can tell me something about him. Bruh, I'm going to tell you that. The first time I heard of him was when Ness texted me who he was fighting. I put the story out, and that was it. Yo, I don't know who he is at all. I know that he lives in Vegas, but he's from Hawaii. I know that. I know that. Uh, I don't know. That's probably Kevin right there. But uh, that's all I know. That's all I know about him. Also, he is 17 and 16, if I'm not mistaken, right? 17, 16. Is this his pro? Yeah, pro career. 17 and 16. So 26 years old. And uh, Elvis should take care of him. Elvis should take care of him. I think that's what ends up happening. But does he does he play the guitar is going to be the question. Shout out to Ness. Like, I, I got that, but I, I, I thought he was surfing at first. Like, I didn't put the Elvis. Like, I didn't connect it. Oh, I I like, no, no, like he, he will play the guitar, he will get the yeah, guitar, will know. he? Okay, I mean, like, guys, so that far, is Kevin Cunningham, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh add him to the show. Um, and I did put the respected post out for anybody that wants to ask Kevin uh Cunningham a question, you can go ahead and do so. I put that on Patreon right now. and Kevin, how are you? Uh, you're connected live. Thank you, first and foremost, for coming on the program, taking out the time to talk some boxing with us. Congratulations on a big win with your star fighter in Erickson Lubin. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good, man. It's always good to, to, to talk to you. You know, you want to, you one of my guys, and, and and you know the boxing boys. You guys are doing your thing, so it's always good to be on the show. Appreciate it, appreciate it. So, uh, how would you assess Erickson Lubin's uh, performance versus Terrell Gachet? Well, I mean, going in, I knew, uh, I knew it would probably be more of a tactical matchup as opposed to an uh, all-out war. You know, because of the fact that I know Terrell. He's, he's he's pretty defensive oriented, and uh, he sets up his offense off of his defense with his high guard and whatnot. So, uh, you know, I figured we we'd have to you know take our time, and it, it would be a little tech, technical matchup, and uh, you know. But for the most part, I think Erickson pretty much won most of the rounds except for the one round that. You know, he, he he got caught with with a, with a uh, shot on the top of the head, and you know, uh, you know, had a little reaction to it. But but it's, for the most part, I thought he won pretty much. It was pretty much a, a, a shutout for the most part up until that point. Perfect segue because uh, I that's exactly what I wanted to take take you to. Um, it seemed like y'all had the perfect plan. It seemed like Lubin was executing it perfectly, and then there was that one hiccup. Um, you know, it was a pretty good shot, but it was one of few that um, you know gosh, you got to get off of on Lubin. Uh, what were you thinking at that moment? Uh, did you think it hurt hurt him? You know, were you worried at all? Take us through that moment. I mean, I was 
pretty much surprised like everybody else. But it was a shot to where, you know, for the most part, uh, Lubin had stepped in on the inside a little bit, and, and, and uh, it looked like uh, Terrell had, you know, did like a bump and throw. He kind of bumped him with, 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 with one arm and threw the overhand right at the same time as Lubin was, was falling back. And the shot, you know, it didn't hit him on the chin. It hit him pretty much kind of like on the on the side of the head. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, hey, you know, things happen. I mean, Floyd Mayweather wobbled with, with, with when he got caught by uh, Shane Mosley. So he recovered and came back and dominated. And I thought Lubin pretty much did the same thing. I think Lubin came back and won the, won the next round big time. And then in the last round, he had uh, Terrell hurt. So. I don't think it was too big of a deal. Yeah, it's funny right. because that's what we thought. Go ahead, Mitty. I'm sorry. Were you surprised that uh, Terrell Gaucher, like at his approach, like it seemed to me like the, the first six to seven round of the fight, Terrell wasn't really on the offensive and wasn't doing much, right? So is that something that surprised you? And did you almost want to encourage uh, Erickson to just be a bit more aggressive and try to fully talk over and finish that fight? Well, I mean, that's that's pretty much Terrell's strategy to get you to open up so he can so he can catch and shoot and, and punch in between your punches. So I felt like uh, we were winning each round, we were pretty much winning every round. So I mean if they were if you if if you got an opponent that's gonna give it to you, he's giving you each round because of his lack of inactivity, we, we we take what you give us and, and we keep winning the rounds. So I so I didn't encourage him to open up and and, and, and do nothing stupid. I mean we're, we're we're winning the rounds clearly each and every round. So you know basically you know we we just kept winning the rounds. Coach, uh, what were your thoughts on the Jamel Charlo? versus Jason Rosario unification match. And, and, and uh, I, I'm not looking like for, you know, what happened with the knockout. Just what did you think of Charlo in that fight? Well, I mean, Charlo, first and foremost, I'm going to tell you, I think Jamel Charlo's the undisputed junior, mid junior middleweight champion of the world. I mean, he's got the three major the three, the big three major titles. And I don't think there's any dispute that he's the champion in the junior weight, middleweight division. So that makes him undisputed. I mean, you got a guy out there with a, with a WBO title, but I don't think anybody can dispute that Jamel Charlo is the champion in the junior middleweight division. So that makes him undisputed. So, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, I thought it was, uh, I thought Jamel, uh, he boxed that, uh, uh, I was, uh, the off weird because it was a knockdown there, but it looked like. So you breaking up, I don't up, know coach? how much of a knockdown. You broke up when you said there was a knockdown. Yeah, but you what? there? Yeah, we hear you, but you're going kind of in and out. I don't know if it's the service or what. Yeah, but anyway, I said it, it, it started off a little strange because it was a knockdown, but it looked like his back foot had went out of the ring, it looked like. But anyway, yep. he, he got back in the fight. He, he looked like he was coming forward and backing Charlo up. But Charlo boxed pretty good, and uh, he landed some good shots. Uh, I just... Uh, I thought we were going to see a little more out of Rosario, for pretty much. Uh, for that, that's I thought I thought Rosario would show us a little more, but you know, hey, Jamel's dealing with whatever they put in front of him. He's handling it. He's taking care of it. So you got to give him his prop, and uh, he's the king of the division. So, so, on the back of that question, then, like, so, how do you see, or what flaws did you see? in Jamel that could be exploited in a fight or in a rematch between him and Erickson Lubin? Well, 
I mean, that's, that, 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 I mean, every fighter has a flaw or, 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 or a few flaws. And, uh, you know, styles make, make fights. Uh, you know, I think, I think Eric has the style that'll give any of the top junior middleweight a problem. And, uh, you know, we saw in the, uh, Fight with Tony Harrison and Jamel, that you know, there there's some things that you can take advantage of, uh, and 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 there's some weaknesses that can be taken advantage of in a Jamel Charlo matchup. You just have to have the skill set to do it. So I mean, I'm not going to sit on you know sit on the show and tell you exactly what it is that we see. And 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 and, 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 you know, but we see some things that we think we can take advantage of, for sure. Now, are these things that you could take advantage of, like, right away, next fight? Or or there were some people that have said that they thought it would be a good idea if Lubin were to go into another fight, uh, you know, and, and, and maybe even another one before uh, in, he ends up getting Jermel in the rematch. Well, I think Erickson has done everything he needs to do to put himself back in position. And obviously, the WBC feels the same. Uh, he's the mandatory for the WBC. He's the mandatory challenger for Jamel, uh, Jamel Charlo's WBC title. Uh, he's had five, five fights since. That fight was three years ago. And, I mean, for the people that says, oh, he needs this, he needs that, I mean... No matter what he does, everybody's still so focused on that first fight with Jamel and, and Lubin. They're always going to say, "Oh well, no, nah, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's not ready yet, or he doesn't deserve the fight." So, uh, you know, Jamel's in a pretty good position to where, you know, he can do whatever he wants to do. Uh, he's the WBA, WBC, and the IBF champion. He's got mandatories probably in the other sanction in bodies also. So we just basically have to sit back and watch how things play out. And if we get the shot next, we want it. If not, if he deci- if he decides to go in a different direction and do something else, there's the, the, the beautiful thing about it, we're in the junior middleweight division, the most competitive division in boxing. So there's other great fights. And we will welcome fights with Jared Hurd or Julian J. J. Rock Williams. Uh, you know, so those are those are. If, if there's no Charlo fight next, uh, those are the two guys that you know we would like to make something happen with. If if, if we can't get Charlo next. So let me let me run a scenario by you real quick because we had talked about this on the show the other day. It was a big debate. So I'm just gonna throw the scenario out at you and you know, you interpret it and you let us know what you think. So what if Lubin were to find himself in a situation where he is the mandatory and they want that next, but then all of a sudden uh Jermel gets a shot to actually unify all four belts against Tashera, and y'all are promised the winner between Teixeira and Jermel. Do y'all say, no, we're not stepping aside, we're going to take the three-belt shot, or do you take the step aside and allow Jermel and Teixeira to fight to unify and then get a crack at the winner for all four belts? While also taking a fight in between or on the undercard is what we were debating. Well, I don't think we need to do an undercard fight. I think, and I don't think it needs to, I don't think it's, necessarily has to be a step aside because it, I think Jamelo's in a position to where the sanctioning bodies will allow him if he's going to do the undisputed thing I think they will allow him to do something like that because he can't fight all of his mandatories at the same time so I mean, Lubin's the mandatory of the WBC. There's an IBF mandatory. There's a WBA mandatory. And then there's the possibility of unifying with the WBO champion. 
So I don't think there's going to, there's going to be a situation where it's a step aside situation. I think it's just he's going to be allowed to do something if he chooses not to do the WBC mandatory net. I think they're going to give him an allowance to do a fight at one of those mandatories or the unification with the WBO net. And we just got to, uh, we're not going to sit around and, 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 and wait. Like a lot of guys, when they get in the mandatory position, they don't want to risk it, risk, risk the mandatory position. So they sit and wait on their shot. That's not something we're interested in doing. We're looking to stay busy. And we're looking to fight the top guys. So if Jamel does something other than the WBC mandatory net, we're willing to put our mandatory position on the line with one of the other top guys. Wow. All right, uh, Kevin, before you get busy, let let me go to the people. Uh, These are obviously our patrons, so these are going to be some great ones. We got David Maldonado who says, Who wins in these fantasy dream matches? Felix Trinidad versus Miguel Cotto, Earl Spence versus Oscar De La Hoya, Keith Thurman versus Ike Corte, and Gerald McCallum versus Triple G. You Fe- said uh, the first Fe- one was Felix- Trinidad versus Cotto? Cotto, yeah. I'll do one by one uh, so you won't forget. Sorry. Felix Trinidad versus Miguel Cotto. Who Trinidad. 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 Spence versus Oscar. Hmm. Hmm. Oh man, you talking which Oscar? The, the, you talking about the, the got, shit, man? Oscar prime was, Oscar. Prime Oscar, Oscar was tough back in the day. Got to be prime, prime Oscar. Oscar. Uh, prime Oscar. Uh, can't go against Earl Spence. I'm gonna ride with Earl. Tough fight, mm. but I'm gonna ride with Earl. Keith Thurman, Ike Corte. I quote. Ooh, man, ponytail. Uh, what's the <laughs> next one? We got Gerald McCollum versus Triple G. Gerald McCollum. All right. Big Super Max in Plainview, Texas says, as a highly respected trainer, much has been made in the TBV community on, on if it's the trainer's job to stop a fight or... Not my question to you is if you and your fighter have had a conversation and your fighter tells you no matter how bad it gets, do not stop the fight. But when no, but then come fight day, he is taking a bad beating over several rounds. What do you do in that situation? Do you stop the fight or do you give the fighter his wish and let the beating continue? First of all, I'm not the type of trainer that a fighter can tell me when to stop a fight if I see my fighter in trouble. If you're in, if you're if you're in bad shape to the point where I don't think you can recover and you're taking too much punishment as a trainer, as a coach, as a leader, my job is to make the right decision for your health and put you in a position to where you can regroup and come back and fight another day. So there's no question, no doubt about it. I'm stopping it if I'm dealing with a fighter that's in bad shape and in trouble and, and, and look almost helpless. I'm stopping the fight. So, so Kevin, uh, for context, there obviously, you know, the debate has been the Wilder and the Mark Breland situation because now Ronnie Shields was on the show. He did an interview with us, and then he let us know that Breland was let go. So that broke the Internet, and it's like, oh, you know, he shouldn't have fired. You know, the, 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 the fans are saying Breland should have not got fired for saving Wilder's "Quote unquote life," you know. People like to say he was about to die in there, so that's where this situation is coming from. It's like, what would you have? Do- is Breland wrong, and should he have lost his job? Well, he. Let me say this: 
he wasn't wrong for stopping the fight because Wilder Wilder wasn't winning that fight at all. Wilder didn't look like himself in the first round. So from the first round on, it only got worse. So to answer your question, no, no, Breland wasn't wrong. Now, should he have lost his job? That's that, that's that's up for those, you know, who knows what's really going on inside that camp. I mean, if they're not hitting it off and, you know, Wilder decides he ain't, he ain't, he ain't feeling Mark Breland no more and he, he wants somebody different other than Mark Breland, he's got the right to make that decision. In terms of should Mark Breland have stopped that fight as a coach who's concerned about a fighter that, that, that's hurt bad, that's in bad shape, yes, he made the right decision. But I can't say whether or not, you know, I can't say what's going on inside that camp and what's the real reason for Mark Breland being fired. I, I mean, I, I'm not in the camp, so I can't speak on that. All right, next one is from Boston Jared who says, how do you see a Charlo versus Andre fight playing out? I think if Charlo allows Andre to land the same shots Korbov did, it could get spooky for him real quick. Yeah, that 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 that, that, that would be an interesting fight. I mean, uh, Boo Boo Box is pretty good, so uh, I don't think uh, Jamel has really faced anybody that boxes as well as. Uh, Boo boo, so uh, I think that'd be an interesting fight. Definitely, definitely. Uh, next one coming from James Valdez from San Antonio, Texas says, What's the update on Robert Easter Jr.? Haven't heard much about him in a while. A fight with him and against Roley would be nice. Wow, that would be nice. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really, uh, I haven't talked to. Uh, Probably Easter in a while, so his dad handling his situation. So, you know, uh, I don't know what they're doing, so I can't speak on that. Yes, sir. Understandable completely. Uh, let's see. Actually, oh, James Valdez had updated his uh, shoot. Uh, look, uh, going to Coach Myers, he says, if you were called and asked to train well, Wilder... Well, no, 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 no. Let me say that at least because, uh, you know, I, I know what it is okay. to have a YouTube channel. And if you out there putting in that work, Coach, we want you to know that people are looking at it. James Valdez says, great win, Coach. Recently seen your YouTube videos. Dope episode on Inside Camp Cunningham. Salute to you and your boxing program. Thank you for reading that. I, I didn't know if it was a different question. Like, if you were oh, man. different. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. For sure. Next one is from Coach Myers in Connecticut. He says, if you was called and asked to train Wilder for the third fight with Fury, would you? What changes or adjustments would you make as his trainer in the third fight with Fury? Uh, I mean, what trainer? I mean, most trainers, I think, would take a, a, a premium job like that, especially if they, they thought that they could make the necessary adjustments to help him uh, uh, do better in the in the trilogy. So uh, to answer the question, I mean, yes, I, 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 if I was asked nine times out of ten, yes, I would. And uh, I mean, there's several adjustments, that, but but there's some there's 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 a lot of things that. Deontay, I think, need to work on for a fundamental standpoint, working on his basic fundamentals. And uh, I would start there with the basic fundamentals. All right, Brandon in Cincinnati says, uh, in my opinion, you were part of the greatest ring entrance in boxing history when you guys came out with Nelly in the Judah rematch. Tell us the backstory on that, Coach. Laugh out loud. I saw you getting your groove on dancing to the ring. Three laughing out loud emojis. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty big that night. Uh, pretty much, uh, you know, Corey uh, had had beaten Zab in the first fight in Vegas, and uh, I think we had, we had did another um, title defense, and then. Uh, Don wanted to 
Don and HBO wanted that Florian Zab rematch, so we did a homecoming, and we, we you know, so I just got with the, the Dennis Petrullo was the general manager of the arena, so I got with him, and I wanted to do a big splash and entrance, and uh, reached out to Nelly and his team, and uh, talked with the arena about doing the fireworks and the pyrotechnics with this miniature arch and whatnot, and we we got it all together and it came off great. Just, just, just wish the final results would have uh, been a little better, but you know, it is what it is. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, next one coming from Big Casual. He says, "What up, Coach? Would you take a Patrick to share a fight for the WBO belt if offered before a Charlo fight, or would you rather just go straight to a fight with the unified champ Jermel Charlo?" Uh. Yeah, we we definitely take a title fight with uh, uh, Patrick uh, Teixeira. We 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 take that, and then I mean because if you were to go win a world title, and then you know it'd be, be even bigger with Lubin and Charlo with the whole backstory of the rematch, and now it's all for all the marbles. So that would be even bigger. So yeah, we 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 consider that. That would be awesome. That would be cool. Next one coming in from Ryan O'Rourke. He says, what up, coach, from UK Liverpool? You want a Lubin to have a rematch with Charlo straight away? Well, you kind of answered. Okay, wait. All right. You want Lubin to have a rematch with Charlo straight away after this win? Or would you consider a Tim Zoo fight in Australia, which could also be decent money as they seem to have COVID under control and could have a good crowd? Uh, he's an Aussie star, and it would also get Lubin ranked higher in some sanctioning bodies. Or is that fight no interest to you guys? interest at all i mean where would that where i mean where would that what where, where would we gain by fighting tim zoo it's like you know over here who is i know who tim zoo is but in america nobody knows tim zoo so uh lubin's the wbc number one mandatory contender so there's no higher ranking than that and if that fight doesn't happen with jamel charlo i think the fans and the network's would love to see Lubin, Erickson Lubin versus Julian J. Rock Williams, Erickson Lubin versus Jared Hurd. Those are fights that I think everybody would get excited about. I know I would. Uh, hey, hey, Coach, do you want Hurd because you feel Lubin could beat him, or do you want Hurd to test your, your wits versus K. Karoma? <laughs> uh it's definitely not testing my wits against against uh 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 coach K. I mean that that I mean, you know, uh I've been up I've gone up against Emmanuel Stewart. You know, I've gone up against uh some of the greatest all time great trainers in the world. So I, I I mean I don't get excited about going up against a younger uh newer trainer so that that that's not the issue the 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 the, the fact of the matter is jared hurd and erickson lubin are two of the biggest names in the division erickson lubin and julian j rock williams are two of the biggest names those are the those are the names in the division so if just so happened that charlo decides because he's got so many options right now if he decides to go in a different direction, we want to still compete against the other top guy. Point blank, period. We hear you. I I, I, I agree. I agree fully. Uh, next one coming in from JT504 says, who wins out of Earl Spence versus Jermel Charlo at 154? Like that, yeah. Oh, man, um, ah, who knows? Uh, Arrow's not at one fifty four, so I mean that, that won't that, happen that, though. That all that's happen. hypothetical, man. He, I, I want to speak. Yeah, picked, I would. Yeah, and it probably Charlo. won't happen. He picked it the wrong Charlo. They train together. They they coach. Uh, they tra They they stable mates. Jamel. Yeah, yeah. And, that and that Earl. ain't that ain't happen. Yeah. 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 Mm. No, he definitely Big Nick is next, Mario, in, Big, in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. And, Coach, we only got one, two, three, four more if you got time. Four more if you got time. 
We got United Kingdom. Do your thing. I'm good, man. Okay. Yes, yes do All your right. thing. I'm good. Thank you. Big Nick says, thank you for coming on the show, Mr. Cunningham. I see you have linked up with the great Stacey McKinley. With coaches like yourself, Stacey and Ronnie Shields, still going strong, how have you found the implementation of modern-day science with the old-school training techniques, and do you prefer the old-school ways? I definitely prefer the old-school old school ways of training fighters because you got to think. The old school fighters fought 15 rounds. Uh, you know, the, the heavyweights fought in eight ounce gloves back in the day and went 15 rounds. And the fighters fought a hard 15 rounds. So, obviously, the old school way of training works if those guys performed the way they did back in the day. So, um, you know, and, you know, I like some of the newer modern techniques and some of the, uh, you know, uh, some of the strength coaches that come along and, you know, come up with some decent ideas. But I don't get too carried away from from traditional boxing training. I add a little, you know, a little modern stuff with, with, with some strength trainers. But for the most part, I'm, I stay focused on the, on the old school way of training a fighter. Because at the end of the day, when that bell goes ding, what are they doing? They're fighting. They're boxing. So you can yeah. do, you can come up with all this new school this and have them doing that and have them doing this. At the end of the day, when that bell goes ding, they better be doing some boxing training while they're doing all <laughs> this new school this and new school that. Because when that bell goes ding, you're going to be fighting. And your right. boxing skill set has to be on point to win the fight at the end of the day. You're right. You're right, Coach. You know. If you know, you know. Next one coming in from Info Joe says, What's up, Coach? Fight prediction. Theofima Lopez versus Lomachenko. Man, I like Theofima a whole lot. But if he don't get Lomachenko out of there in the first four rounds, He's going to school. Mm. Simple as that. Damn, to school? That's my pick, too. I don't know, Coach. Yes, man. sir. But what about the Pedraza fight and that Linares fight? And remember that both of those dudes are moving up. Tiafimo is 135 since birth. He going to be the biggest boy Lomachenko done been in there with ever. I don't know, man. Lomachenko got mad. Skills, brother, and at the end of the day, skills pay the bills. Mm. You, do, do you realize how many of Floyd Mayweather's opponents were way bigger than him? Yeah, but that's next level. <laughs> that's next level. You can't compare. Don't do that, coach. Don't compare Loma to Floyd because Loma getting beat up by Pedraza. I, I, I never, I never. Oh, oh, stop! Oh, stop! Don't you do that? What you doing? <laughs> Because I never compared him to Floyd. But what I said on, was this. What I, what, what I said was this. I think Lomachenko has next level boxing skills as opposed to Teofimo. Not on that Floyd on level. All, I, all, I, all I'm saying is not on that Floyd level, especially defensively, because he's getting hit by lesser opposition. Linares would never lay a hand on Floyd, and neither would Pedraza. That's all I'm saying. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. Hey, I guarantee you this. Sometimes when guys are really talented and next level, they fight down to the level of competition. I guarantee you Lomo, Lomo is getting ready for this young, hungry boy with pop in his punches, and I think he's going to be ready. But I like Tiafimo, and I like him in the first four rounds. If he don't do his thing within the first four rounds, he's going to school, man. <laughs> school is classes in session after the fifth round. Trust me. Mm. I agree, Coach. I agree. Uh, next one. We only got two more. Next one coming from Young Tigre. He says, salute, Coach, from San Antonio. Who wins and how? Tank or El Terremoto? Uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Yes. 
Well, Tank, Tank, basically, you know, I think the fight will be over within five. But if Leo finds a way to stick around and it and Tank killed himself to make 130, it, it, it could, it, 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 Tank's going to win the fight. But if Leo Santa Cruz is still around after five or six rounds, it's not going to look good. Hmm. Yeah, and I can see that. I don't know. Making one thirty. Like making one thirty. I feel like making, debating, Coach. Making one thirty. Making one thirty is definitely not going to look good after the sixth round on Tank. If that mm. boy is still around after six rounds and Tank killed himself to make one thirty, it's not going to look good. But I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't plan on. I don't think Leo's going to be around after the sixth round. Hmm. Mm. Knockout, huh? Okay. Wow. Wow. That's a that's one hey, hey, prediction there, coach. Tank, Tank, Tank. And that 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 shouldn't be a a a, a hard prediction for anybody that's watched Javon K. David fight. Especially mm. if you see him train in the gym, whatnot, because one thing for sure, Tank ain't trying to Tank ain't trying to box and go round. Tank trying to get rid of you. And he's got bad intentions on basically everything he's throwing. But if he killed himself to make 130, after in there winging them hard shots for five or six rounds, it, 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 it's not going to look good if he ain't in tip-top shape. And, and, and he took a lot out of himself trying to make weight. That's what I'm trying to say. Understood. So, so do you uh, just think... Highly of Gamboa, cause, I, and and I'm just no. trying. To, I'm just trying to. No, tell, I'm, no, 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 ho, ho. You don't got to You don't get the, I got that. Okay. Tank wasn't in no damn shape. Ain't no way a 39 year old Gamboa with one leg should have went 12 rounds with Javante Davis. But if you watched the fight, you saw Tank sucking for win in the seventh, eighth round. Sucking for win, so that told you he killed himself to make weight, and he wasn't in the best of shape. It, it's not about what Gamboa did; it's what Tank wasn't doing. Speaking of Gamboa, does Haney get a better performance? He's gonna fight him November seventh in, in Hollywood, uh, Florida, at the Seminole Casino. Kevin Haney's gonna beat the shit out of Gamboa. Hmm. Mm, that's what I think. He's going to beat the dog shit out of Gamboa. I agree. I agree. Uh, he's going to do the Gamboa what Tank, what Tank, he's, he's going to do the Gamboa what Tank should have did to Gamboa. That's what Devin Haney's going to do to Gamboa. Whoa. Do you think Tank ever fights Haney? Ever? Could you see that fight happening? Uh, who knows, man. Yeah. Who knows? I know uh, Devin Haney constantly says he wants to fight. Him and his dad, they claim they want to fight. So, I mean, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's up to, to, you know, Floyd and Tank and, you know, it's, you know, they, they the fight is there to be made because Team Haney says he wants to fight. So, you know, we just got to see what happens, man. That would, uh, that would be huge. A lot of bad blood there. Uh, last one coming from uh, opponent B-side says, would you be willing to host another Border Wars event? Mm-hmm. Coach, you remember Border Wars? Always. Always, man. You know you guys are always welcome to, to, to the camp. That's, that's, that's not a problem. Yeah, that was official, man. Do you still got that, that, that same house where you started uh, Camp Cunningham, or you got a, a different one now? I know that was big. That one was big. No, nah, yeah. They, no, nah, they, nah, I, I, we, we don't have the camp, that same camp house. No, nah, we, we sure don't. Oh, okay, that was a nice, yeah. beautiful, big one, man. I'm actually looking down in Florida yeah. now. Them, them houses are beautiful out there. 
Yeah, come on down, man. This be the perfect spot for you, bro. Oh, no, I'm coming. <laughs> it's a matter of that offer getting accepted. The boy is out. It's over. You know, I, 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 I'm done talking about it. I'm trying to be about it before the snowfall. Yeah, I don't miss shoveling snow and, 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 and you know, driving on, driving them in them ice storms. And I don't miss none of that. Oh, tell me about it, man. Oh. <laughs> I know it, man. Listen, Coach, yeah. I want to thank I'm walking you. A, hey, hey, I'm walking, a, I'm walking around in flip-flops and, and shorts and tees in January, bro. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. Wouldn't trade that for nothing in the world. I hear you, man. That's right. Yeah. I'm telling you, like I said, man, that is the, that is the move. But I want to thank you, obviously, for coming hey, on. You uh, know what? But you know what, man? You know what, man? Yeah. I, you know, I think. The 154-pound division is the most competitive division in boxing. And, you know, I know the welterweight division has always had the, 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 the all the sizzle, you know, and, 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 it, and it's had the, some of the top guys. But I think in terms of competitive, being competitive, I think the 154-pound division is the most evenly competitive division in the sport right now. And I think it's only going to get even more competitive. And then you, you got Sean Porter talking about coming to 54. You got Madonna talking about coming back at 54. You got, uh, what, Dervinchenko that just fought Jamal Charlo. His, him and his managers talking about moving down to 54. Hey, man, the junior middleweight division could be... Uh, one of those old throwback divisions like back in the day, man, when you had the Hagler and the Hearns and the Ray Leonard's and Durant, you know, all fighting each other, man. And, 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 you know, that's what the sport, I think the sport needs something like that. Coach, what do you think of uh, Sebastian Fondura? He, he, his last fight was against uh, Nathan Gallimore. Oh, man, he didn't he look good? He looked great. He looked great. He looked great. Yeah, I didn't and think I, he was going to I, I, I got a guy. Yeah, but I got a guy in my camp that, that'll match up with him pretty good in terms of height, reach, and skill. What, what's his name? Leon, Leon, Leon lost in the third. Oh, we met him. He was at the Border Wars when he was there. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's Darrell. That's Anthony and Andre Darrell's nephew. Hmm. So he, he, yeah, he what's his record he's 13, now? He's, thir he's thirteen and zero. Okay, well, he's coming along. You know he's he's yeah yeah you know he's a celebrated amateur ranked he was you know won the national Golden Gloves all the nationals ranked number one in the amateurs so he's thirteen and zero as a pro so six five by one fifty four six five you know with with that height and reach like Fandora you know could be interesting. Uh, what, have you gotten him on TV yet? Yeah, he fought. He fought on PBC shows on the Fox, Fox Sports One. Okay. Uh, he just fought on. Uh, he fought on Caleb Plant. Plant undercard in his last fight and on Caleb Plant's last. Uh, that hometown card. Caleb Plant fought right. at home in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He fought. Yeah, he fought on that undercard and got a first-round knockout on that card. Coach, we got a last-minute wow. question from Boxing Expert who says, Salute, Coach, big fan. I just want to know, who's your pound-for-pound -pound number one fighter is? Oh, I mean, I had Earl. I had Earl as, 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 as my pound-for-pound -pound number one. Uh, but, you know, during the accident, we 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 got to see, we got to see, we got to hope, we hope and pray he come back and everything's still the same. But I had Earl at number one. But uh, coach, before and, before you go on, can you just tell us how do you like your criteria to get on your list? Like, what does a person have to achieve to be on your list? Because Earl being number one sounds strange. Well, Earl is Earl is the best fighter in his division. 
I mean, and 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 you know, he's he's had some marquee fights, you know, with 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 Sean Porter, Mikey, Kell Brook, uh, and he he's dominated. He's unified. He's dominated. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, he 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 he's my number one, and and uh, and and. Uh, and uh, Terrence Crawford is a close number two. Mm. So I don't know what's so strange about it. I'm you just know, saying because I got Canelo. No, I got Canelo. Well, you asked what's strange, right? Go so ahead. the thing Go is, ahead. like, if you ain't fight out of your division, it's pretty hard to rank you pound for pound anyway. Like, you ain't even move up yet. You only been champ in one division. You 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 might you know you know you know I don't think moving up has anything to do with pound for pound because if you if you reign and you dominate that's we talking about pound for pound the best fighter if you reign for years and dominate and unify your division and, and reign then you don't have to move up in weight I mean Canelo has moved up and down the weight division but I mean. A lot of people think that he does it, he picks the right guy and move up just to say he won a, another title in this division, in that division, and the guy that he really won a, a title from in another division wasn't really, uh, you know, an A-class fighter. So you could win titles in four or five divisions, but who did you beat to win those titles when you moved up to those different divisions? Let me ask you, do you think Jamal Charler would have knocked out Sergey Kovalev the way that Canelo did? That sir, I think he would have knocked that Sergey Kovalev out for sure. Like that though? It would have been that cuz that was like pretty that, pretty that television sir, worthy. That Sergey Co the the, the Sergey Kovalev that Canelo fought is not the same Sergey that Andre Ward fought. I mean, he was good enough to win his belt back three times in that division, champ. Three times. Three-time champion at 175. That's, I don't know how, that's, who does that? Three times at one division, That's that shows that you got some skills. But, but yeah, he's got skills, but he wasn't the same guy, man. He wasn't the same guy that Andre Ward beat. I'm do not, you do I'm you not, dispute that? No, you I dispute? don't. I don't dispute that. I don't dispute that. I just don't think that he was washed either, because he had he had came back from losing to Alvarez by knockout and outboxed him. Then he beat the young lion and Anthony Yard. Then he got the Canelo fight. So it's like, you know, and that, that made him three time when he got his belt back from from Alvarez. But didn't he fight Anthony? He fought Anthony Yard and he fought Alvarez. Like what? Two months after he fought Anthony yeah, Yard, yeah, there was about there was about two weeks in between, you know, to like two week uh, separation. He had he had a quick camp, very quick camp turnaround. Yeah, real quick. So 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 all of those are little subtle moves to, to advantage Alvarez. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you don't you don't have a quick camp. You don't have a quick camp. A two week turnaround in a quick camp, and you fighting one of the best pound for fighters, pound for pound fighters in the world. That's I mean, not something you do if you really planning on winning. I mean, that's that's that is what you do if you planning on winning. That's what Mayweather did to Canelo when he made him fight at one fifty two. Like when you're the A side, you get to do those type of things. No, that's not something you do if you're Kovalev and his team. You don't you don't rush into a fight with the powerful with the best pound for pound fighter in the world, and and that that's your opportunity to fight him. You make sure everything is done right. You make sure the camp is done right. If you're planning on winning, that's that's how you do that. If you're planning on winning. No, I love I love the emphasis on planning on winning. But let me ask you, what would you do in that same situation? There was rumored fourteen million dollar payout for Kovalev. Do you tell him not to take it if you're Buddy McGirt? No, no. From a business standpoint, from a business standpoint, you take it. But that doesn't mean it. 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 Everything is is is, is set up perfect from a preparation standpoint. But he's not in. He doesn't have leverage 
so he has to take it however they decide to give it. So even though he's going into a situation, he's being rushed into that fight. Right after he just came out of a war with a young Anthony Yard, he's being rushed into this fight with Canelo. He's, he's, he's dealing with a legal case, a rape case. He's back in and out of court with that while he's in camp. And, I mean, we could, we could talk all day long with with. with, with with, with nah, nah. Let, let, certain things let, let's that go back throw to, a fighter off. Nah, I mean, look, it's it is what it is. Let's go back to the Earl and Crawford one and two, but Canelo not. Like, you don't think none of the wins that Canelo have are better than any of the wins or anything that Earl and Crawford have done? Like, oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for so, sure. So, now, if we're talking about pure accomplishment standpoint, if we're talking about pure accomplishments. Then you have Canelo rated high because I had Canelo rated at number one. But Canelo's being inactive. Canelo's starting to kind of like do that picking and choosing type stuff. They, I see what they're doing. Uh, uh, but coach, you know, he's not really. Let's talk about that. Is it really picking and choosing when you move up to sixty? Right, you a fifty four pounder. You move up to sixty because Gennady's begging. You. For a fight, you're not even at 60 yet. So you finally get there. You give him two fights, then you unify with Daniel Jacobs, then you move up like to 68. Like that's how it happened. I don't know. Some people don't really remember, but like anything you need me to fill in, I got you. For accomplishments, I'll go back and say this again. From an accomplishment standpoint, from an accomplishment standpoint, I would rank. Canelo higher from an accomplishment standpoint. And I could even go and say I could rank Pacquiao even higher from an accomplishment standpoint. But who do I think is the best? When I when that question is asked, who's the best pound-for-pound pound fighter right now? Who is the baddest fighter right now fighting in a boxing ring? I can't look solely at accomplishments. I gotta look at who do I think is the baddest ass kicking this fighter in boxing right now? And that's the question you ask when you ask who's pound for pound the best right now. You're not asking who's got the better accomplishment throughout their career. You're saying who's the best pound for pound fighter right now today? Who is that guy? So, you know, Max used to have this Hello? thing. Yeah, I hear Hello? you. I hear you. Hello? Hello? I, ain't, I didn't lose you, did I? Hell no. Hell no. I'm just trying to be respectful <laughs> and give you your time. So, you know, Max had this thing where, where, where he, he would say, like, you know, uh, the pound for pound guy is, you know, I believe Chocolatito, if he was a heavyweight, he would be. So, you know, you, you, you follow me, right? So my thing is, you're saying if Earl and Canelo were the same way, you picking Earl. And you're also saying if Crawford and Canelo were the same way, you picking Crawford. I'm, I'm going to tell you one. I'm going to tell you another thing. Pre-accident. Remember that. Pre-accident. Because none of us know until we see Earl, none of us know if that accident took any effect. So we, you know, until we see him. But pre-accident, you could move Earl up to 160, and I got him over Canelo. Mm. I want that fight in Texas. I think that Earl needs to really push for that fight before, you know, Canelo can't make 160. I think in Texas, Earl did 48,000 with Mikey. Canelo did 50,000 with Liam Smith from the UK. That's a 100,000 seat fan, uh, fight right there in, in Cowboys between Earl and Canelo, in my opinion. Um, yeah, man, I, I would love that fight. I, I agree I, with you, and I think I think that's the smartest business move on planet Earth yeah. that Earl could possibly have made. Uh, you know, uh, going up to, if, if he could have, if they could have struck a deal to fight Melo at 160, man, him and Earl sells, Earl and Canelo sells out Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Yeah. Chat, the chat saying you got me crying because you, 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 you ranking everybody above Canelo, they said. I'm, they, they think I'm a Canelo fan, boy, over there. 
So what, what's your? What's I'm, your a, I'm a Canelo fan. I'm a I'm a Canelo fan. But you know, to be honest with you, man, who does really? If, if Canelo doesn't fight Triple G in a trilogy, who's really over at the zone that you really get excited about Canelo fight? Excited? I mean, get really excited. No, excited, nobody. I'm talking about excited, man. I'm talking about super excited. Nobody. Like mega fight excited. Nobody. I mean, there's nobody there mega fight, but I, I am excited for an Andrade fight. I would love to see Charlo and Andre fight. I, I'm not. I'm not that guy. That I would love lie. I would love to see I love I would love to see Andrade get that opportunity, but I don't know if I'd be super excited about the fight within itself. Now and Andrade probably could outbox Canelo. Shit, but not, I'm gonna tell not you, not if he go in there looking like he the look fight. versus Killer. Mm. He's a hater. Yeah, coach. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he, he, but he let his head you, man, lead like I'm that with Canelo. He gonna get uppercutted with Canelo. I would love, I would love to see Jamal. I would love to see Canelo and Jamal. I mean, because that's the fight. Jamal just, Jamal, Jamal just dealt with. How do you pronounce it? Dervianchenko? Dervianchenko. Dervianchenko. Yeah, Dervianchenko. Jamal just, just handled him. Yes. I mean, handled him. Great defense in that and fight he had. A lot, of, a, 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 a lot of people felt like Dervianchenko beat Gennady. Edged out Gennady Golovkin. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, I really want to see a Canelo and Jamal fight. That's the fight I want to see. Mm -hmm. Now, how far away do you think we are from that? Because I tell my listeners that that's far. Now, I, I would also, I would also like to see uh, Canelo and Benavidez fight at sixty-eight. Yes, love that one. See a Jamal and Benavidez, or Jamal and Caleb Plant, Ooh. or Caleb Plant and Canelo. But 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 see, but is see, it is it fair for Jamal to move up to sixty eight again? He don't get the opportunity to unify in two divisions now if he moves up again. Who's at sixty that's worth fucking around with, man? If he don't get Canelo at sixty. And he got to go to get his got to go to sixty eight. That's what he got to do. I mean, what's at sixty? What's at sixty after Jamal just dealt with Dur Durvinchenko? What's really at sixty for Jamal? I mean, the Gennady Golovkin fight is still big for him. For him, I it's think big so too. And I like the Jacobs fight too. J I no, think it's that's sixty eight though. Jacobs is at oh, that 68. is sixty eight. My bad, you're right. Danny Jacobs is at 68. Danny yeah, Jacobs yeah. is at 68. And that's another fight that I like to see Jamal in. But it's at 68. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that you know, Andrade Golovkin, is there. To, uh, Golovkin. Just so he could unify. Just so he could get in them history books, Coach. Just so he could get in them history books and start, you know, building that that Hall of Fame resume. So his first ballot when he, get, when he retires. I mean, he don't have to unify. He don't have to unify to get in no history books. I mean, look at Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather was never undisputed champion. He never, he never unified no division. Nah, nah. Floyd was definitely unified. He wasn't Ever. undisputed, but he was unified. Well, that's what I'm, when I say unified, I'm saying unify the whole division to, to to become undisputed. He was never undisputed. So, I mean. It doesn't matter about unifying and this, that, and the other. If the names and the big fights are not there, what, what, I mean, what are you doing? At some point, you get to a point in your career where you're looking for the big fight. That's the only thing that makes sense. So you don't like the, the Eubank fight that they trying to push? Chris Eubank Jr. fight for Charlo? You don't like that? I mean, that's, that's almost like going backwards. He, he's going from Derbychenko to Eubanks. What has Eubanks done? 
Um, Hello? Talk to me. He beat. If it takes you that long to tell me who he beat that, <laughs> that makes him a significant enough fighter, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Nah, coach, I don't know who he last beat, man. I, you know, you know, not everybody so, so, stays in so, the mix. So what? Oh, he fought Korobov. But, but what remember? I'm saying is that no, 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 no. He fought Korobov. I just remember, but it was also a oh, bad win. It was hold, a, on, hold 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 on. I'm listening. Are you really gonna bring that up? No, no. It's Are just, you really gonna bring I'm that up? Korobov, Korobov <laughs> was Korobov was whooping his ass until he threw his shoulder out. So the fight only went two rounds, right? Uh, yes. Two rounds. So why are we even talking about? Why was that? that? No, 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 Come no, on, no, man. no, no. But I wasn't bringing it up like that. It, you know how when you can't remember a person's last fight, then it popped into him. I'm like, oh, he fought Corbov. That's what I said. I wasn't trying to like, like, oh, he. But that shouldn't even been. That shouldn't. That shouldn't. James that shouldn't Gale, have by the even way, been recorded. Bigger. Is his biggest win? Just to say, just you know, just yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the Corval fight shouldn't even been recorded as a win on his record because it didn't even go two and a half. What is they stopped it in two and a half rounds or something, right? It didn't complete four rounds. Yeah, but that's because the fighter couldn't com compete. He he threw his shoulder out just like Gamboa. If he decided, yo, my Achilles hurt, I can't fight. Well, okay, you lost. Okay, but 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 uh, but if you if you have an accidental injury and the fight doesn't complete four rounds, it should be scored as a no contest. Well, but every different state's got different rules. Different sanctioning bodies got different rules. So that's yeah. you know that's neither here nor there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you don't like that fight either. I hear you. I guess I don't know, man. I, I you know. If you twin brothers and your brother, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying. I'm not saying I'm not saying I don't like the fight, but it, I mean that's a step backwards from what he. J I mean, he just went on pay per view and fought a guy that fought Triple G in a highly competitive, questionable fight, and he he he's got momentum going. So, what does Chris Eubanks do for Jamal at this point? So what about what about if the United Kingdom was open, right? If they were doing some sort of, you know, social distancing seating the way that Earl and Danny going to do in Texas, uh, would it make sense for, for Charlo to go to the UK and fight him to, to expand the, the, the global brand or not even in the UK it makes sense? That's a nice, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's a nice little angle. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not knocking the fight. I mean, you would think he would want to move on to, to bigger and better things. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, it's hard because Canelo's not, like, he, he hasn't been at that weight in so long. Then Gennady's waiting on Canelo. Plus, he wants to do his IBF mandatory a little bit sooner with, with Camille Sedimenta. So, you know, there's really no big names. I mean, unless he does that cross-network fight with Andrade, which is a unification... You're right. There's nothing there. Nothing big. Yeah, but but Jamal and Jamal and Ronnie Shields already made it clear they willing to go up to 68 or 75 to fight Canelo. Yes, Ronnie definitely said that. He definitely said that. So, which, which, so which I was if shocked. can't get Canelo, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think I think Jamal Charlo and Benavidez would be huge in Houston. But Kevin, you know this business. Like right now, with Canelo being on the zone, you don't think that the Jamal Charlo fight is hard to make? Yeah, but Canelo and Charlo is hard to make, but Charlo and Benavidez or Charlo and and, 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 and Caleb Plant ain't hard to make. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. Now. You you don't tell you 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 don't think that the fans would get excited about Jamel Charlo fighting Taylor Plant or Jamel Charlo fighting uh, Benavidez? I, you don't think they get excited about that? I I absolutely think they get excited, but I I'm the type of boxing fan that 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 only watches boxing, so 
I wouldn't want Charlo to move right up and fight neither of those names. I would want him to move up and get acclimated with some other names before then when he feels like, all right, now I'm a full fledged hundred and sixty eight pounder. Hey, but see why he why he he but no, no, see, that's where y'all fans get it confused. Once a guy is considered one of the best fighters in the world, he ain't gotta get acclimated. I'm, Sugar Ray Leonard didn't move up and wait and get acclimated. It's a lot of pounds, though. It's a lot of defenses. Tommy Hearn didn't move up and wait. He started at 54, huh? coach. He started at 54, coach. Yeah, but he's been out, he's been fighting at 160 for the last four years, man. Uh, I don't, um, four? Has it been four already? First 160-pound yeah. fight was 2017. Two, three years, all right. 2017, July. Sebastian Holland Jr. Yeah. But then, and, 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 and that, 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 you so, I mean, he don't, so you said if he move up and wait, he should fight some nobody nah, not because no, he moved up and wait? Who not, wants to watch that? <laughs> not no nobody, but I ain't trying to, like, you know, I want him to make sure. Cause he's a, he's the smaller man moving up. I mean that's natural. I, I think that's natural, especially when you got an investment. You know. Yeah, look. Yeah, I mean we just talking. These fights, these fights we talking about. None of. I mean, only we don't know what fights they're gonna make. We're just speaking from a fans' perspective and what Absolutely. type of fights we like to see as fans. We don't know what, what the people, the powers that be, we don't know what they're going to do. You know, they do whatever they want to do, whether whether we like it or not. But we can talk as fans and say, hey, man, i like to see this person fight that person, this person, this person fight that person. I like me personally. If Jamal Charlo can't get Canelo at 160, I'd like to see him fight Taylor Plant or, or Venus Vidas. Those are fights that people say, wow. See, we... we as our sport, those guys it, need to it, fight we, each we, other. We kind of, we 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 kind of we kind of losing big time to the UFC right now in terms of ratings, in terms of numbers and whatnot. So when we when we do something, we we we, we really gotta 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 you know when we make these fights, we gotta start making fights that, that get you that wow factor. You know what I'm saying? But you 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 get more wild for Jamal versus one of those two instead of those two versus each other. They they owe us that fight. We've been supposed to got that unification between. Oh, they 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 do they do owe us they do owe us that fight. They really do. But you got Benavidez who 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 lost his title on the scale. So now from a business standpoint, he don't want to go into that fight with 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 with. That he, he's lost a lot of leverage by losing that belt on the scale. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So important, man. That's, that's, that's. So, mm. you know. You know. So, the big one, man. Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford. You think it's happening? Crawford's 33 now, man. He just had a birthday. Happy birthday. I don't know if it's going to happen, man. If I'm Terrence Crawford, you know, I'm just uh, the people that's doing his business. He he needs to really sit down and get 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 on top of them and and, and sit down and 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 and, 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 and figure out what's got to be done to put him in some big marquee fights because. You know, his legacy is being, I mean, in terms of his legacy, he needs marquee fights. He needs career-defining fights. And at this point, they're not offering him any career-defining fights. They're just grabbing whatever they can get to put in the ring with him. But his fans like to say that 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 it's the PBC side kind of not wanting to fight him. Like, why does he got to sign to get those fights? That, look, but the fans don't understand the business. That's been going on since the beginning of time in boxing. And 
you know, we could say the same thing for, you know, when Pacquiao was with top rank. You know, why did he only fight top rank fighters? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's just part of that's just part for the course, man. From a business standpoint, that's that's just the way it goes. You know. Hmm. I mean, legacy wise, I think he's he, he he's done what he needs to do. I know that you mean career defining fights, but like, he's accomplished a lot. He's accomplished a lot, but who has he really fought? That's what great fighters has Terence Crawford fought. Great fighters, uh, Gamboa, and, and don't 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 start stuttering, man. If you come on now, you 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 come on now. I'm saying Gamboa, Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn beat the mighty Pacquiao. Oh, are you night. kidding me? He beat Pacquiao. And then Crawford moved right up and got him. No no in-betweens, no acclamation. Let me get that belt. Man. Man. So. Yo, so Pacquiao struggled with Jeff you Horn. You going to say, Jeff, you going to, hold on, hold on. You going to, hold on, man. You going to tell me Jeff Horn is a great fight. Great win. Is that what you're telling me? I'm saying that was a great win at that time. That was a great win. I ask, the question I ask you is, what great fighters has Terrence Crawford beat? I know he's accomplished. He's won fights. He's won titles in multiple divisions. He's unified. He was undisputed at 140. But what great fighters does this man have wins over on his resume? Victor Postal. So, so you think Victor Post was going to the Hall of Fame? I mean, see, when we talk about Terrence Crawford, we got to ask these type of questions because he's he's in that conversation, man, and he's in a position where he can accomplish all of that. But you have to fight some career-defining fights. And none of those fights that you've named so far, I would consider career defined. Even Gamboa. When you beat Gamboa, you fight a fighter that come up from 126. I mean, so, I mean, but Gamboa had one fight at 35 eh? before he fought Crawford. He had fought, remember, he had fought Dolly's Perez before he fought Crawford. Mic check, mic check. Yo, what's going on, Francis? Yeah. But I don't, Sorry, I don't man. knock Terrence, man. Terrence a great fighter. Terrence a great fighter. He's one of my favorite fighters. But I wish he was in a position to where he could fight all of those great names, all of those. There's, there's hell of a fight at 147, and he shouldn't, he shouldn't be missing out on them. But at the same time, this is a business, and his business associates should have foreseen what's down the road that we could potentially make mega fights with and, and and where do we need to be to get those fights. But that, I mean, you got to call mean, it what it got, is, man. You got to think, Kevin, they were under the impression they were going to get that Pacquiao fight. They was on the, they was on with top rank and top, and Pacquiao was there. They, you know, he lost to Horn, but but he, you, you know, he been was supposed to get that fight before Horn got it. Pacquiao, at that point, man, Pacquiao was on the way. Pacquiao was on the downside, and Pacquiao was the only thing that was there. Once you do Pacquiao, what's next? Yeah, but once you do Pacquiao, you next. You get but it? If you, if you, but you only, but if you don't, you, you need opponents, man. I know, but that's, the, listen, so they plan was, Yo, I know all the welterweights is with PBC. Fuck that. We going to stay here, sh roll a dice, try to get Pacquiao. Because if we get Pacquiao, they got to see us. Because we the, we the only welterweight to be the legend. Because Floyd gone. So if if, if Crawford would have got the fight. Well, no, Floyd, at that, at that point, at that point, Floyd was still around. Yeah, but he. At you that know, point, you know, Floyd was still around. You know, Canelo learned from Floyd. <laughs> if Floyd picked you, you don't pick Floyd. That's a fact. Right. So, right. you know, I think Crawford banked on 
Bob has been good to us. He going to get us that Pacquiao shot. And then Pacquiao, you know, pulled the flea flick and bailed to uh, PBC. Wouldn't you pull a flea flicker if, 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 you, if you lost a close fight to a guy like Horn? Uh, I mean, I'd have been pulled the flea flick if I was Pacquiao. I, I, I'd have left a long time ago. <laughs> you know, listen, I, I'm over here. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm playing devil's advocate to be nice because I, I've been telling Bud he need to go a long time ago. It's, it's his fans that don't want to believe that. His fans believe PBC should open their arms as if – Bradley never fought nobody but top rank fighters. That's just how it goes. But they don't want right. to see that. That's they don't. Right. They don't want to see that. How though. do you think? How do you think? How do you think Tim Bradley got three fights with fucking Pacquiao, bro? Yeah. And that's what Crawford was banking on. Like, yo, it, they did it for Tim. They gonna do it, it for in me. House. But that's why Crawford stood there, though, Coach. Because he's seen Bradley get those opportunities. Bradley even got Marquez. Bradley did better than, than Crawford because he got three Pacquiao fights and one Marquez pay-per-view that made like 345000 Or 75, actually. I think it's like 375 Marquez Bradley did. Hey, man. Well, I'm getting ready to go have some dinner, man. It's good talking to you, oh, man. It's it was, always man. good. Thank so, you, man. Uh, it was a great, great conversation. Thank you so much. You want to give out any social media, Coach? Yeah. I know you're on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, you know I'm on Instagram. Uh, Kevin uh, underscore Cunningham underscore Kevin on Instagram. Uh, uh, KC Box Trainer on Twitter. Cunningham on Facebook, so you know that's where I'm at. Oh, is that the great Kevin Coach Kevin Cunningham? Yeah, yeah, you late face. My Sorry, co-host Mr. jumped on. Mr. Late. How you doing, Mr. Coach Cunningham? All the way from Toronto, Canada. This is Francis here. Sorry I'm late. I had a business move I had to make, and I tried to get back in time. I just wanted to tell you congratulations on your victory last weekend. Um, you guys put on a hell of a performance, even having to weather some storms. So I just want to say congratulations to you. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, man. You know, it's a 12-round fight, so, you know, it, within 12 rounds, nine times out of ten, most fighters do get caught with one shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, every nine, and you might get caught with a shot in a 12-round fight. So, for the most part, I think, like I said, Lubin pretty much dominated that fight. He got caught with one shot, but, uh, you know, it's all good. We, we come out victorious. We move on, you know. For sure, All Coach, right. man. Thank you for coming on. And uh, once again, we look to get you on. And, and even Lubin, man, if he's down again, we definitely would love him to come on and do a victory lap for the people. All right. Appreciate it, my man. Thank you. Uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. World-renowned trainer Kevin Cunningham. Yo, you know, uh, I, once we started talking pound for pound and, 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 and first ballot Hall of Fame and all that, I'm like, ooh, should I get into that? That that conversation we had uh, about uh, when I, you know, we, we were debating Judah, Spinks, First Ballot, Unified, all that, you know, on whether or not he gets in. So, but we did, and we left it. We let we let it be. You know, <laughs> we let it be. We got a we got a super chat. Let me let, let me go to that. Francis, what's up, right. brother? Everything good? Everything's good, man. I just had to take care of a business move that I had forgot about, but I'm glad I did. But I tried to hustle back. It was about two and a half hours away. I, I drive pretty good, so I tried to get there Damn, back in Damn, two time. hours. Whoa, okay. You yeah. like me, man. I don't mind none of that. I love nah, driving. No, I'm, I'm a long... I love driving. I'm a long-distance driver, brother. Uh, boxing expert, I do apologize. We got no Doomy. You know, he's normally on Super Chats. I was heads into the interview, and Mario... Uh, told us he was cutting out early, so some of these, if you meant for them to be heard while he was on, apologies. And the first one is King Nello. Oh, man, we really need Doomy. Desmaya la... Okay. King Nello, desmaya la gata, which means uh, King Nello, desmaya la gata. So uh, I think that means desmaya is when you faint, right? So uh, uh, King Nello makes... Charlo faint because you know he likes to call Charlo la gata. Then he comes back and says, Who at 
PBC for La Gatita. And he's, again, talking about Charlo. So he's saying, who could Charlo fight, uh, you know, at PBC? But, uh, yeah, Kevin gave some good names. He just got to move up. I didn't really want him to move up like that without getting an opportunity to unify yet again. But I understand that those are bigger fights uh, up there. And Boxing Expert back with another one. says, King Nello would car crush <laughs> Earl into a coma. You're terrible, bro. You, uh, you see, you can. Come you on, that's horrible, man. I know Come you on. fans, like fans of a fighter, go so overboard uh, for their fighter. It's like um, LV Slugger, Andre versus Eubank, good opponent for the Charlo versus Andre fight build up. Since Charlo is coming off a good win versus Ser Sergey, uh, but isn't Eubank PBC now? Yes, Eubank is with PBC. So uh, Andre would be a little bit tougher to make. And then we got Marcus, who says, uh, Bob said that Pacquiao Crawford fight because he didn't want him to get hurt. Crawford team isn't good to him. Bob said he stopped the Pacquiao Crawford fight because he didn't want him to get hurt. Crawford team isn't good to him. I I I'm lost. I remember Bob saying that Crawford would kill Pacquiao. I remember that, and, and yeah. that's why he didn't make it. But then remember, he was out here trying to make it in Qatar all over again. So I don't know, man. It's it's you know, look, you gotta you gotta. I'm not saying don't believe promoters. I know I said that earlier in the first show today, one of the shows that we don't believe. We don't. We we believe them with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? So it's like you listen. And sometimes you might get some good stuff out of them, but you there's definitely another, have to filter it. You got to make sure you're not getting no BS, man. There's, I think there's another super chat. Uh, let me refresh here. Yeah. Did I miss one? I'll probably have to go back. I maybe missed one because I don't see anything <laughs> new. Let me go back, back, back. Uh, yeah, Boxing Expert says, Haney is going to put Gamboa to sleep. Mark my words. He should, I hope. LV Slugger says, so y'all really think Santa Cruz is going a distance? Um, I mean, based off that Gamboa fight, yeah, possibly. I expect him to knock him out, but yeah, I didn't expect, I expect the tank to knock out Gamboa a lot sooner, especially once the leg was there. I was really mad that he didn't do it quicker. I didn't even understand how he didn't do it quicker. Big facts. With, with the power that he's supposed to be carrying, he's supposed to get him out of there. Yeah. Um, Supermax says we'll be in the building December fifth. You should okay. be trying to you should be trying to uh main event border wars December fifth. Acting like you ain't seen none of them border wars chat messages. You know <laughs> all y'all Texas fighters. We need to do border wars nine in Texas December fifth. Let's get it popping. We I'll start be there. early. You know what I'm saying? Yo, that's a big ass fight, yo. Danny, I'll be there. Like, listen, Danny Earl's a big fight because it's the first fight we allowed to come back to, right? Is there another fight that I don't know about that got fans in America? Like, this the first fight. Like, bruh, we need to, we need to bust a move, bust a little sexy for this one. Uh, let me see that. Now I definitely got to everybody. No, left no man behind. Shout out, Francis, for keeping me on the P's and Q's. We... Hey, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second, what man. Up, what Public up, what service announcement. Check, 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 check me out, man. We got over 300 plus in here right now tonight. We went and got the great Kevin Cunningham, the trainer of Erickson Lubin, on an interview, and we entertained you. We just asked you to hit the like button, man, and be sure to hit the subscribe button. It don't cost you nothing, just a click. Go ahead, Ness. All right, all right, all right. Um, so we left off on the ESPN card, and we were talking uh, TDK Elvis Rodriguez. I'm gonna just go ahead and pick them. We never spoke about Lorenzo Truck Simpson, who's gonna be fighting Sunny. Oh, this is a typo. It's Sunny Doverson. Sunny. It's supposed to be Sunny Doverson, right? This is must be a typo here. Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I think it's Sunny. Yeah. Super Chat from Super Check says, 
My fridge ain't good enough to main event yet. Laughing out loud emoji. Oh, yo, Rel on the line. He hear you, Super Max. He gonna say, yo, you a heavyweight. Fight me. Um, Let me see. Lorenzo Truck Simpson is fighting. Oh, no, that is not yeah, a typo. Sunny. Yeah, it's Sani. It's not a typo. Whoa. All right. Sani. Okay. Uh, he's undefeated. Two draws. Um, Looks like he's been beating... People coming off of losses and no wins. Sonny is about to be food. Truck Simpson another, all the way. Another KO or just a straight up win? No, this is a knockout, bro. This dude's okay. record is built up. If he goes in there and gives a good fight, I'll be shocked. And we're going we gonna to eBay him. We're going to eBay him. <laughs> we're going to give him his ranking. But till right now, Sonny. Sonny. Wow. Okay, Doverson. Let's see. Do I don't even know what that is. Let's go. So we 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 we, we picking a truck on that one. Then we got to talk about Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. We did kind of kind of talk about it with with the coach and Mario, um, but yeah, you know this one is official now. Um, Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia, and it's gonna be happening on the same day, right? December fifth, right? So. Yep. Uh, hopefully they go on right before Arrow and them, so we don't have to, you know. So there's no counter promoting or anything like that. You know what I mean? So that he could just go ahead and, you know, get his fight off, and it doesn't interrupt the next telecast. Listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It helps with the visibility show. That helps us grow. And if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. We're trying to get to 117,000. Looks like we got 116,447, but I'm hitting a refresh because you know that shit goes up and down. All right, 448. We went up one time. We got a super chat from Mad Bent. Says, TBB for life. Devin fighting an old cripple man. Yo, so did Tank. Tank Thanks. actually fought the cripple man. Devin is fighting the rehabilitated one. Yeah, you know. And let, let me ask you a question. You went over your picks, right? Uh, just for this weekend, we 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 still haven't done the London fight, but we did just pick everything for ESPN. So you got, so they run it through again one more time for me, if you don't mind. Uh, Navarrete uh -huh. versus Ruben Villa. I'm picking Navarrete. Odorno versus the dreaded, most dangerous TBE to be announced. And Elvis Rodriguez versus Cameron Corral. I'm picking uh TDK. The Dominican kid, Elvis Rodriguez, and Truck okay. Simpson battering Deversani or Deverson, whatever the hell his name is. Doverson. Doversani. Wasn't Joseph supposed to fight um Spyro, no? And he pulled yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spyro is out and all. Okay. Um question. So any of these fights, are you doing any of them by stoppage other than the Truck Simpson fight? Uh yeah sure give you Rodriguez by stoppage, why not? Okay. All right. Yep. We're gonna move on to the London card on BT Sports. So this will be on ESPN Plus. Liam yep. Williams. Uh, Mitty's not here to defend these guys, so I'm gonna have to give you the brief version of this, which is. Watch the Liam Williams fight because he's the mandatory to Demetrius Andrade that all the super duper duper hardcores call in and talk about and, you know, wish had a fight. This will be his mandatory, so at least you won't be like, yo, who the hell is defending his butt? Yo, man, who the hell is this mandatory, yo? This is who he is. He just beat Alantes Fox, and now he's taking this stay busy because they still have not found negotiations between him and... Andre, so it looks like that's going to end up, you know, going to purse bid or being called by the WBO to negotiate within those 90 days. So Liam is the main event. That's what you need to be watching. Um, Nathan Gorman versus Richard Lardy. I might do a live fight chat. Like, if I don't have life, like, if... Like, if, if my girl ain't making me go to the movies or buy something, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I'm here... I'm doing that, but if I'm out, if I'm out, I'm not coming back home to do that. But I want to see that. Um, it's funny. I didn't know Dubois was that big in my mind until this fight. 
these are two Dubois victims, and I'm excited yep. for the fight. So that's good for Dubois. Hopefully more Americans feel this way and are interested in watching his losers or his victims face each other. And I guess it's because I'm a, a, a hardcore, so I want to see how good they really are, right? Like, they're fighting each other now. Like, how good are you? Or is Dubois a big, big-ass puncher? And you guys are better than, you know, we think? Or, you know, are you not good? So we'll find out, right? Good fight for Gorman, who's bouncing back. And good fight for Lardy, who's from Ghana. Like, I love, I actually like this fight. I can't get mad. So definitely watch that. Now, I can't defend nobody else on the card. I don't know anybody else on the card. All right, so I'm, I'll take it over from there. So go back to Liam Williams is is being touted as, you know what I'm saying, the next, uh, uh, I wouldn't say that, not a, not a superstar, but he's been touted as the next thing in the British boxing at the welterweight, the welterweight at the middleweight division. I okay. don't know about that, but I'm gonna let you go ahead and flow. For now, right? Because he's like the the new up, <laughs> upper coming sensation. But anyways, he's looking for a fight against. I don't know Andrade. where you read that at. Where you read that at? I, I'll show you in a minute. He went he went up. Uh, he's looking to go up against Andrade. So hopefully he can come through this and and petition for that fight against uh, Bubu Andrade. Um, in terms of Leon Woodstock, both Leon and and Anthony they're fighting for the coveted British title. The British title, if you got it, it's it's it holds weight over in the UK, so it's a, it's good to have that title. So they're fighting. Both fighters don't have much power. Matter of fact, both both fighters don't have power at all. So it's going to be a straight box up boxing match. Let's see who got the better skills, who's whose jab is more efficient. Nah, nah. Who's quicker. Liam got power. Liam Liam uh, hurt. No, no, no. I'm talking about in terms of Leon Woodstock and Anthony uh, Kakas. Oh. Oh, and I know who they both are. They both don't have no power, but they can box. Uh, Leon is a, a slick boxer, so it's for the coveted British uh, British title. Any British mm. title is well known over there in the UK. Carries weight, so I mean, having it is a good thing. Liam's defending his British title, if that means anything. He definitely is. That's a big thing as well, too. That's a very big thing in 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 the UK. <laughs> Let me be specific. Uh, Nathan Gorman from I think Nathan Gorman should come through this fight. It should be a hard fight. I'm hoping I'm hoping he he can he's confident enough to get the KO. He does have the power, um, but Lardy is a good co uh, a good competitor. He's a good opponent, so I'm picking Nathan to win that fight. But it could end by stoppage. Yo, hey Bo man, I thought you was my boy. I do not. You wilding right now. I'm not even repeating what you said. Terrible. Uh, damn, you picking Gorman by stoppage. Yo, you brave with that. I like that, man. I like that you do that, but I don't know. Can Gorman get the stoppage, bro? I, he got he got the power. The problem is really? that when Dubois hit him, when Dubois hits anybody, it just changes your mindset on whether or not you want to continue to fight. No, you know I'm sure. I watched Gorman. I'm just, I didn't know he had, what, like, what made you think he had power? Who he fought did you see in him that, like, you, you felt that way? I mean, he's remember, they're fighting a lot of people domestically that we're not going to really know about. Yeah, but, but no, he fought, they, he fought Rajvan Kajanu. He didn't knock him out. He definitely ain't knock out Kingpin. Only AJ did that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Kingpin, yeah. <laughs> but he's gotten a few uh, a few TKO stoppage. So that's my take on mm, that particular damn, but card. but you're picking him by stoppage, though. So that's Yeah, that's I interesting. think he can do it. Let me see. And Lardy, see, that's the thing. Lardy has done nothing but fight it. But fighting Ghana, like he he's back because of Frank. Shout out Frank Warren. He lost to Dubois, and they bringing him right back. Obviously, he's expected to lose. He's expected to lose because Gorman is the house fighter. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, Richard hasn't fought since Dubois, so obviously, you know that is a clear indication right there. It's it's over. Both well, of them, but that's both of them, though. But it's well over a year, bro. It's well over a year, you know what I mean? So, you know, he's living in Ghana off that Dubois money still. Like, I ain't trying to fight, you know what I mean? I ain't trying to fight. And and you're right. You know, uh, he's coming off himself, but I guess it's still fair, right? It's it's one is in April and the other guy one hasn't fought since April 2019 exactly. and the other one hasn't fought since July 2019. 
Just saying. So <laughs> it, it, it is pretty even. Even though Gorman's the house fighter, that's pretty even, you know, as far as time off. What are you going to do? Listen, uh, my bad, bro. Let's continue. <laughs> Let's move on. Next. Next. That's it. Uh, That's it. That's that it. was the fight. It's time to hit these uh, streets. Go out to these yeah, callers. You know it. the number to call in? one four two five five six nine fifty two forty one. Press one one time. Voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People outline. Don't forget you can add Nestor Gibbs on Skype to be part of the conversation. Topics of discussion, gentlemen. Are Spence Garcia moving to December 5th? No longer in November. Now it's an AT&T stadium in Texas and fans will be allowed and we really should do a border wars. Just saying. October 2nd, Saturday, Las Vegas, ESPN, and Manuel Navarrete defends his belt. And then, you know, the undercard is there if you want to make your picks. Also, we are discussing Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia, official also for November, uh, for December 5th, same day. As Spence Garcia on the zone, no official venue announced yet, but this will be on the zone, so it should not clash if they're smart, which they probably will clash because, you know, it is a Golden Boy matchroom co promoted, and Golden Boy is an American thing, unless they send in Ryan over there, which they're not, because then he's gonna be like, wait, I thought I was the A side. So this might clash. They might try to, you know, put it on late. So that they could get views, right? Because if you put it on early, you might not get the views because we're not there. But they're on demand. So I hopefully agreed. <laughs> they're on demand. So hopefully they don't really stress it that much and, and it doesn't I just don't want counterproduction. I don't want that. Don't counter don't counterproduct. Like, yo, let me get one fight. Don't put them both on at the same day at the same time. That's gonna make it very inconvenient. What if they do it? What if they do a stagger like how um, um, the Charlos did their card? That was a pain in the ass. That two hour in between bullshit, man. I didn't. I didn't even like that Charlo were two separate main events, bro. I thought I was getting Charlo Charlo double header, not right. a double header split weird card. That I, man, that wasn't it. So, but so anyway. that's what I'm saying. Like with this card right here. You know, if they do something where they start the Ryan Garcia fight at like 4 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, I don't know they're gonna do that. Then, That's what I'm saying. Do, and then do the do the. No, because you gotta remember, 4 p.m. Eastern is like oh, yeah, fucking yeah, one that... o'clock LA time, and they're so, from LA. So who can they can't? So there's nobody really then. There's no time really they can use. Let me see. Earl Earl, then we're gonna go on at about. About the same time, can they push Earl fight earlier? Danny, so man. they fight earlier and have Ryan go later because of the West Coast time. I doubt they're gonna push Earl to do anything according to Ryan Garcia. Earl's the big fish. That's a fact. So like, we're gonna have two fights on at the same time and have to choose. That's just the reality of it. Which sucks. I said that we're the A side. <laughs> We Yo, let's saying. get out to these callers. You know the number to call in. 1425-569-5241. Press one one time. Voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People Hotline. Don't forget, you could also add Nestor Gibbs on Skype. We got a super chat from Supermax in plain view that says ATT Stadium has great Wi-Fi Nest. You know that. Just watch Ryan on your phone while you're you're at the right. Bro, two birds, one stone. I guess he meant to put you at the fight. Yeah, champ. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's go out to these callers. We're going to go out to these, uh, you know, quick little things. Remind you guys to do some stuff that we need you to do to remain official. Remember yeah. to rate us five stars on iTunes. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash The Boxing Voice for the latest and greatest interviews with your favorite fighters. Going out to New Mexico, I mean Detroit's own, Detroit, right? De Detroit's own, uh, the ringer, wait, damn, Rel, you ain't calling it so long, do you got an intro? I almost forgot now, I don't remember, but Rel in Detroit, what up? Rel. 
What up, Ness? I ain't got no intro, though. Oh, wow. Uh, shout out to Coach C- Cunningham for coming on to the show. I like the topic that he that he uh, spoke on with Mark Breland. You know, we don't know what really goes on in the camp. We just on the outside looking in. We knew he threw the towel in, but I'm pretty sure that's not the reason why he got fired. Uh, but the Why do you Spence think he got Jr. fired? What, what, what's your, what, speculate. Give me your guesstimation on it. I want to know. Why do you think he got fired? Just real quick, my quick speculation on it is that it has something to do with the Tyson Fury fight. Uh, his corner was aware of certain things, and my speculation is Mark Breland has something to do with it. Mm. Um, But that's just a speculation. I can't say. Um. As far as the Errol Spence versus uh, Danny Garcia fight, I'm very excited for that. Welcome back to boxing. I will be attending the fight. Um, I don't have a favorite in that fight. I think it's a 50-50 fight. I respect Danny Garcia's left hook, and I respect uh, just Errol Spence as a fighter, but I still feel Keith Thurman is the best at 147. But um, I was going to say, for, for since... They're allowing the audience at that fight. Do that mean every sports venue from December fifth, or every spot, or every boxing venue has uh, an audience after that fight? I'm not sure, man. And it's definitely state to state. It's per state. Okay, so it's just not, it's not like everything is just about to open back up in December then. No, nah, it's not like that. Nah, nah. It's state to state. Each, each, each uh, governor of the state has, you know, they're making their own decisions. Like Florida opened up already, you know, um, and, and Texas opened up already. Okay. Um, well, shit. Yep, that's my call. I just want to say great content as always. Ness, thanks for having me. This is your boy, Rail. I will be attending Border Wars Season 9. Um, I want everybody to really, really tune in to Border Wars because it is am- under amateur boxing, but it is some great fighters in that, so myself included. So, yeah, come. So, I want y'all to just really pay attention to Border Wars. And if you're feeling yourself, sign up. Shout out to CBV. Good night. For sure. All right, Yo, bro. and, you know, actually, we're getting more and more fighters. Uh, Dan, the man in Washington, uh, I don't think he has any amateur fights, but he was going to join a. Golden Gloves, and then the pandemic hit. And, yeah, I got hit up, actually, by a few amateurs, two of them, that wanted to fight in Border Wars because of the exposure. And then Cunningham himself said he wants to put two of his guys, Steve Cunningham himself said he wants to put two of his amateurs who got a grudge match on Border Wars. So, yeah, man, it is growing. Speaking of ringers, let's go out to... I don't believe no motherfucking beat me. And I'm not supposed to. If my nephew is a leap fighter. So he ain't gonna he wanna he, he wanna fight the guy that's proven himself and the guy that people think he can't beat. And that's how you get paid. Right? Yeah, shout out Topo, Riddick, Bo, Bo Mac, and Bo Jackson. I hate you ain't play my new intro, though, Ness. What's up with that? You forgot? Oh, uh, shit. You got another one? Let me see. I had, you know, I, I had that uh-huh, 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 yeah. But we ain't, don't worry about that right now, but. Uh-oh. Not only to play that one? Damn. I got yeah, you. Yeah, I got yeah, yeah. I got the outro. All right, I'm going to have to put new on this one so yeah. I remember. I be listening, man. I keep hearing the wilder, uh, all the why he get fire breathing because of the towel, all that. Man, everybody forgetting the fact that he didn't fall fury two times. The game plan didn't work either time. It was a, a draw and a loss. You got to come up with another game plan. In, a, in most cases, you need another trainer to help you come up with the game plan and execute. So outside of the towel, man, the game plan wasn't working. Period. The second time, it was way worse than the first time. What they going to do, go back in with the same trainer again and try the same thing? No, bro, you got to change it up. The tie was just the icing on the cake. But as far as this, this weekend's fights go and all that, 
uh, one thing stands out to me most as far as bedding and whatnot. I don't know if I'm better to make the bedding show, so I'm going to call this out. Uh, the Villa versus Navarrete fight, for uh, out of all Navarrete fights, he fought like 32 times, and only five of them have went the distance. The one time it did go 12, he stopped uh, dog bait in the 12th round. So this fight scheduled for 12. Villa never been 12 rounds. And it's a plus 300 for it not to go the distance. And like a plus 330 for Navarrete to get the stoppage. So I feel like it's a pretty good bet as far as risk goes and whatnot to take the fight not going the distance. You ain't even got to pick Navarrete to win. But I think that's a good bet. It very well may go the distance, but I feel it's worth putting a little bread down on as far as that goes. Uh, I'm also excited to see Garmin and Lardy fight because Lardy coming to bump. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to see Chuck Simpson. That's a, that's the only fights that really excite me this weekend. Uh, Conwell fight was going on last night. I watched it, and I hate that y'all been missing these types of fights, man. Y'all been sleeping a little bit, Ness, man. I don't know what's going on. What you mean? I don't know if we're getting too caught up in the poly. She, you was, you did you? I don't even think you knew about the Conwell fight, did it? I knew about it. I just ain't know it was we, yesterday. We, yeah, man. It was last night, and a few other people did live fight chat, so I tuned in for theirs, but it's always TBB first for me, man. Uh, shout out Don King and Roger Mayweather, man. I'm out. For sure, for sure. I mean, yo, that was tough anyway. Wednesday, they bugging. But you right, I did. I'd have done a fight check because I'd have been watching it anyway. The thing is, I'm disappointed we, in you that you, as a boxing fan, said that Wednesday boxing doesn't matter what day it is. It's boxing. Nah, it don't matter. But they need to tell you. They need I, to. Promote. I agree with that, but I'm just, I'm right. just listening to the little thing that you said that. Bro, because I'm Wednesday. a, I'm a hardcore, hardcore, and and I didn't know. I got emails on it, and I didn't realize. You know, I I never open the email like you look at it. You know, you keep, I, I I have I get a lot of emails, bro. So, you know, I never noticed it said special showbox Wednesday. I, you know when I noticed that after the fight when I got the email talking about Conwell defeats in the ninth round. I'm like, what the hell? How this fight happened on a Wednesday? That was yo poor, poor promotion, poor promotion, bro. I got you, 704. I thought I typed that already. My bad. Oh, I just typed what up? Because that's what you're supposed to do. Lead with a hello first. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've I been seeing you say give Steve your boomerang. I'm just going through all my ringers because they the ones get to cut the line. And now we will go to what looks like. I want. I mean, I I don't have Mario here, so I've I've been able to know Rel's number by numbers, and I know that's I mean plus Matt and Bo and JP, but he ain't press one. I don't. I, I always see that two one four. Is that Ian Philly or is that James Valdez? Because Ian Philly got that 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 that, that. two one four. Can't help number, you, man. man. I know. What up? Yeah, this is Ian Philly. See? This me? Almost, babe. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm almost there. It's all numbers, man. I should have been an accountant, man. Hey, 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 look. Hey, that fight, they pushed it back, and that fight is on my grandson and my brother's birthday. So I was going to go up to Philly and watch it, but since they pushed it back, when I get back here, I'm going. So hopefully I'll meet you there. Hopefully you be there with your team, whoever come out, man. Hopefully I'll meet you. Uh... Ruben Vila, if I'm not mistaken, used to fight on Showbox. I like him. I'm picking him over Navarrete. If he lose, I'm going to think it's because he gassed out because Navarrete put that pressure on him. But I like his skills, though. So I'm picking him. Um, Ryan, come on demand. According to FightNights.com, the fight's supposed to be in California. But that's on demand because I'm going to the fight, man. So you can watch that on demand. Ness, the $15 Patreon. Do you get a... Uh, a boomerang call with that? That stepped out for a second. Just give him a second. Oh, you come back right now. 
You back right now. Go I'm ahead. Here. Ask him again. E, what up? Hey, the uh, the pay the fifteen dollar Patreon. Yes, sir. Do that come with a boomerang car? Nah, that's boomerang is forty. Boomerang is forty a month. I don't see no forty a month on there, so that means you ain't got no more spaces on there. Oh yeah, it's not, nah. Let me check. It's probably because it it's, it stays sold out, man. Because if everybody had a boomerang, we we'd never go home. But let me tell you, let me see what's available. And, and, and look, I'm not trying to make you upgrade, but yeah, uh, masterminds also get boomerangs as well, and so do pound for pounds. Yeah. Ringers is there, but that only cuts the line, only gives you one call. Let me see, public page. But you can always do the counterpunch, man. You can always do the counterpunch, you know. But yeah, it it, it, it is. No, it says... Uh, uh, well, yeah, you might be right. Let me see. I mean, let's change from early today because I looked on it earlier today. Yeah, try, the, uh, try, try now. I think it may be available. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It looks like it is though. Okay. I I keep checking it. I keep checking it, but I'm picking Ruben, yo. I'm picking Ruben, man. I think room is gonna beat now red say long as they don't gas out. Yeah, I think there is an availability. So if you want it, you should check it in. Uh, uh I believe there's thirteen spots. And we got one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, there might be one left. There's twelve people there, champ. You wanna go quick. Uh let's see, let's see, let's see. We got King Amin in New Jersey. What up, what up, what up? Just like the king is what I mean. I mean, the king is what I mean. I mean. Oh, yo, yo, let me tap dance on a few points, man. What's good, fellas? What up? What up? So, yo, first of all, um, Luis Ortiz ain't been popping since I said his name on Battle Bar. Now, all of a sudden, he's fighting. Probably his sparring partners are better than Cassius Cheney's. might be better than competition than the cat he's fighting. No disrespect. I'm just saying, like, he really hasn't been popping since I mentioned his name in Battle Bar. So, he can give me a percentage on that. Um, yo, Tank is not doing a million pay-per-view vibes. What is, what is Floyd on, man? Like, come on, man. It's ridiculous. Yo, like we're the, I don't even see now two hundred thousand. Like I don't know why it sounds you know a, a, like a good number, but it's, it's probably two two fifty. I don't know. I don't know because for some reason I feel like Tank got the kids. You know what I'm saying? But kids kids stream. Kids don't buy pay per views. Those old people buy pay per views. So I don't know. I don't know. A million. He's out of his mind. Um. So yeah, you know they moved the fight. You know, Texas Stadium, they want people there. If it's 100,000 people and you have 25% capacity, actually it's like 109, so that gives them a nice margin. So you can have 25,000, they're going to try to sell all them seats out and have a good fight. This is what we've been waiting for, man. Hopefully Border Wars 12 will be down there. Some, Excuse me, Border Wars 9. I'll be, you know, a nice 175 contender, you know what I'm saying? Somebody feeling hungry, you know what I'm saying? I'll throw you a bone. That's my call. Mm. King Amin, thanks for calling in. We're going to go to Texas Big Fish. I'm going to go ahead and beat up Danny Garcia. Hey, Daddy, this a dollar beat. You can't take out that green jacket because I just took your bill. It's fly, you can't baby. even set out an arena. Don't read your paper. You can fight me. So sit down somewhere. Sit down somewhere. Sit down somewhere. You will never, you will not be fighting on paper. You want for me. Yo, what up? Matt, what's going on, champ? What's up, TBD? Ness, Francis, what's good? What's happening? What's happening? Yo, Ness, I got a, I got a small bone to pick with you, bro. What small up? Small bone to pick with you, bro. You be using my intro, bro, but don't be shouting me out or nothing for these shows. <laughs> I, I got the hottest intro <laughs> in the whole game right now, bro. And don't get no credit for that shit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
Yo, I thought that was but, credit. You the only <laughs> intro I've ever used as an intro, so I thought that was yeah, credit. Yeah, man, but you know that you know these Bud fans be trying to hate on my intro, bro, because they hate the truth. I mean, look, you know man, what it that, is, that's man. That's a whole nother argument. But anyway, back to it. When I saw the news, I jumped for joy. This was that's what I wanted. Cowboy Stadium, a couple thousand fans. And your boy's going to be in the building because I ain't going to miss that fight. Probably going to be one of the best fights I see in person. You know, knocking on wood and windows and praying to God they come to the day. I love it. I, I definitely will be in attendance. I already know I'm going to be there. Um, obviously, you know, I'm an Earl Spence fan, but I do respect Danny. Uh, it's going to be a great clash. I can't wait to see what the rest of the card comes out to. Javante Tank Davis is not going to do a million pay-per-view wise. Let's just nip that on the butt right now. It, it's not happening. It's not. Yeah, a couple hundred, a couple hundred thousand, maybe, maybe, but one million, no, no, that's not happening, man. Uh, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a nice, entertaining fight, but I don't see it doing a lot of buys, man. It's just, I don't know. It's just what the. It kind of makes me think back to that. Uh, I don't remember who it was when they were talking about why they put certain fights on Fox and why they put certain fights on Showtime. That's what kind of makes me just filter out what I want to watch and what I think is gonna be successful. But uh, besides the besides that, it's, it's it's great. Couple months of fights coming on. They're getting delayed, but they're letting us in. So I don't mind the delay. And Ness, you got my number, bro. I'll be there. Sign, sign, everybody, sign up. Let's get ready. We're coming back, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Peace. Message. What it do? This is seven oh four. Let me see. Super chat. Okay. Okay. In the meantime, if you don't know the number to call in, it's one four two five five six nine fifty two forty one. Press one one time. Voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People Outline. You can also add Nestor Gibbs on Skype. We got Mister Seven O Four. Read says, it. Or you got it. Go for it. All right. It says salute T B V. I'm gonna send like a half of fifteen on a super for support. Join us at Patreon 15 exclusive. Shout out 704. Always listening, man. Um, we going to Brandon in Cincinnati. What up? Yo, yo, yo. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree with uh, Machine Gun. He does have the best intro. But it ain't because of Earl, it's because of, in my opinion, it's because of Sean. When he, like, takes the jacket off, I just think he's like, it's fly, baby. He just sounded so cool and player when he said that shit. Like, you know, he just sounded like an Ohio cat when he said that. Like, it ain't because of Earl. Earl was crying and whining, sounded like a little girl and shit. But uh, shout out to Earl, man, uh, getting the big fight in Texas. I agree with y'all. He is the big fish. He is, the, uh, you know, big fish in the pond or the lake. It's going to be a damn shame when we see the first fish get drowned when he fights a little black nigga from Nebraska. Yeah, he's going to get drowned in that fight. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to uh, Earl, man. Shout out to Earl, man. Uh, doing big things. He's doing big things. Can't knock him. As far as uh, the showbox car, the showbox car was pretty good uh, yesterday, man. You had a... Uh, Brandon Lee got a first round knockout. Uh, Janelson Figueroa. A lot of people don't know he the cat that dropped Tia Fimo in that sparring video a couple years back. He uh, got a first round knockout. Conwell Conwell looked pretty good. His defense was tight, but he his, he looked a little too tight. Like he ain't let his hands go. He needed to loosen up a little bit, but he did get the stop. And he hurt his hand in the fight. But he looked pretty good. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with uh the cat from Philly. I'm picking Ruben Villa to win. Um, I, 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 I see something, man. That's all I'm going to say. I ain't going to reveal too much. I'm glad most people picking uh Navarrete, man. That just, you know, when that when stuff like that happens, you know, that just makes my pick em league uh, results well, even better. I believe you. You need more people. Hey, man. You, you go, Devin Haney even said it. Devin Haney said people sleeping on Villa, man. He going to pull up the upset. He went. He split. He split four fights with Shakur and Amateur. They beat each other twice apiece. Tony, dude's nice, man. Mm -hmm. Hey Ness. Hey Ness. Speaking of um, 
this Wilder shit and the new trainer. Have you ever been on Malik Scott Instagram, bro? Hell yeah. He a wild boy, man. Yo, you, so you saying you just start following him? Hey, he a wild boy, man. Wild hey. boy, Yo, Malik, Malik and his girl, wild. Yeah, hey, I, as soon as I get on there, this nigga in the bed, butt neck, eating crab legs with his girl. No, they, say, yo, the they do mad <laughs> naked shots. Like, they yeah. don't fuck around, <laughs> bro. They got a house in Cali. They, they be at the pool taking... Yo, and they obviously got a photographer or an amazing camera that they could set it up, sit down, and like... I don't fucking know. Clapper or some shit? I don't know, bro. But they be taking some amazing pictures butt-ass naked. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Wilder's new trainer, Malik Scott. Y'all ain't know that? Yeah, that's been... He been Thanks he, for your call. <laughs> he been, Listen, message, <laughs> message. Message, message. <laughs> Super up? chat from Mad Bent 100. Speak it. Believe it. Receive it. GTD. One million buys. Shout out to you. Definitely. Definitely. Speak it, believe it, receive it. That he, Javante Tank Davis going to get one million pay-per-view buys. Yeah, man. We need a new star, man. I hope. I hope. Because then that means he will be more prone to give us, you know, those big fights because they mean money for him. You know what I mean? Uh, so that means maybe one day we could get a, 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 a Haney or a Tiafimo or... Uh, Vasil, you know, all those are all those are fights, man. If he does well, then he knows that every other fight, especially does that well. I mean, look at Earl. Maybe he could do as good as Earl. See, people ask him for two and one, but if you're doing three, man, if you could do 345, 350, your first pay-per-view ever, man, you are winning. Your next step is to do what Earl and Canelo done, which is your next be a pay-per-view. No, no break in between. Earl is out here on, on a machine. Pay-per-view, pay-per-view, pay-per-view. And that's because they believe in him. And he's doing the significant numbers, you know. Not significant, but enough to keep him there. And it so means why, more so money for him. So why can't Tang do it? I, I feel like with that younger generation of so social media, he should be able to carry I that number. I I, you know what's so funny? If we Not to compare, and I hate to do this, but you have to if you're going to have you know, I mean, a proper argument with some facts. If you look at the Charlos in terms of popularity, in terms of marketability, it would seem that Javante might be a little bit more... No, you're right. You're or right. more marketable. No, no, not only that, like, if you think of the Charlos, right, like, they don't, they do half the media that, let's say, Tank does. And they right. and they did, you know, half of the safe number. Like, I think if Tank does 300, that's amazing. Because Supermax said something real official not too long ago on a morning show, something about little guys. Like, what little guys do we know? Like, what 35-pounders, 30-pounders, actually, what 30-pounders do we know that sell pay-per-views? Who's the last 30-pounder right. to sell pay I don't even know. I, I don't even know the last the last 30-pound pay-per-view star. Who is he? Who was at 30 selling pay-per-views? I don't, I don't... I mean, I'm not a history guy, so... We got a super chat from uh, Izzy in Oklahoma says, Speak it, believe it, receive it. Pulev in three. Izzy, don't let me forget that. I'm going to make that bet. I'm going to make that bet. I promise you I'm going to make that bet. You know, you've been putting that, that into the universe for so long. There's no way I'm not making that bet with you. Just don't let me forget. We're going out to... We're going to go backwards, man, because my, my S's, get the, they be drowning, man. Uh, uh oh, look, see, that's what I'm saying. See, when you scroll, you see the S's, then you 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 see you got the <laughs> champ here. You got the champ. You can't let the champ wait. And man, I know he's gonna be mad at me. Don't waste your call on that shit. I'm I got you. I got you. It's hard. It's hard, all right? But don't waste your call on that. I got you. I got you, man. I got you, champ. And Jesus say. Red belt, black belt, the B O N green. I'm king, undisputed goat, T B E, and you can catch the news first on T B V. Voice of the people, people now let me speak. Scientists of the sweet, B O X I N G. B, what's good? What up? What up? What's what up? up? What's up? 
Yo, happy Thursday to you. Smoking my cush, I hope you is too. Yo, uh, the man talking about he got the coldest intro, man. I have to disagree. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I ain't even gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about fights. What's going on this weekend? Because cause I've been working, bro, so I don't even know. Uh, well, this weekend you got ESPN with Navarrete defending his title. And Wait, he's still fighting at that same weight class? I thought he said he was coming up. Uh, he is coming up, but he's fighting for a vacant WBO title. My bad. Uh, yeah, I might have to, I might have to go with what Brandon's saying here. I mean, I ain't seen him at this weight class. He he got power, but it's it's that stay off me power or keep him keep him clean power. It ain't that real knock him out power. You know what I'm saying? So I have to see that weight carry up and that power carry up too. Who else fighting him? Uh, Joseph Adorno was scheduled to fight Avery Sparrow, but that's TBA now. So Joseph Adorno is back versus then the, I, the dreaded TBA. Then, my, then I seen I seen a. Uh, Carol and Danny, they got moved back to December 5th? Yeah, not back. You know, they, they, it got moved to fans allowed. So I'm trying to do border boys or at I least am. an appreciation night for December 5th. I'm with that appreciation night for sure. It's going to be cold, though, man. How I be feeling in December in, in Texas, man? Man, I don't know. I'm from Detroit, though. So what it matter to me? Man, uh, I ain't going to talk about it, but... Next night coming soon, man. I'm, I'm shooting for Saturday. So, uh, afternoon, morning, afternoon. I can't, I can't promise morning, but definitely afternoon. So, look for it, man. And then, like I say, that untitled listening party, party on Monday, that sounds like a plan to me. Uh, as I always say, please make sure you push the thumbs up. Oh, and my man who was asking, you do get the one benefit of getting that mixtape for free for the $15, too. So, you know what I'm saying? That's something you get if you're a boomerang or ringer, you know what I'm saying, pound for pound like me, you know what I'm saying, the mastermind, it don't matter. As long as you 15 and up, you get that free mixtape download, only available on Patreon. Yes, only available on the on Patreon, backslash the box, boxingvoice.com. Now, as I always say, please make sure that you push the thumbs up, share this in every episode of the Boxing Voice podcast. This is TBV for life. And if you ain't on Patreon, that's because you're stupid. And shout out to El Camino. Peace. Peace. Peace, 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 we peace. We got peace. Stone Bone. What up? What's up? Hey, Ness, can we just uh, get one thing straight about the that this intro that everybody keeps saying, Crawford fans, and Earl is talking to Danny. If Bud was to fight Keith, Danny, Sean, any of them dudes, where is it going to be at, Ness? If Bud was to fight Keith, Danny or Sean, what would it be on? Pay-per-view. Okay. So he's talking to Danny, telling Danny the only ways that you're going to get on pay-per-view is to fight me. He's not talking to Bud. Bud fight any of them guys is going to be on pay-per-view. And to me, that's not the mark. If I'm gonna have to pay eighty dollars to watch you fight, is if you if it's a good if you're a good fighter or not. That ain't my mark. But I'm I'm happy for this fight. I'm happy for him to get an opportunity back home. He get to be the guinea pig for us boxing fans. As long as he don't get no outbreak, then we won't have no excuses for other people to go ahead and take a risk. And if they do it, it's pretty much a goal for Wilder Fury, right? Like why not come back to the same place? Like we if you can do twenty five thousand there. You're going to double the price for the tickets for Wilder Fury, sell you $25,000, and go right there. Because I'd rather be there than in Vegas where you're only going to have maybe $10,000, $7,000. Go for the bigger venue. Go for the bigger money. And maybe more people will come to see it. I don't know if I'm going to go nowhere too, you know what I mean, too crazy. I ain't too worried about COVID or nothing like that. But I ain't want to, I mean, I don't want to give my old lady or my kids nothing. So I'm going to be safe. I'm going to watch from, from a distance on TV. And can they give us black fans some better? It must be nice to be Mexican because there only be one headline black on the pay-per-view and everybody else is a bunch of Mexicans that we don't even know. Can we get Earl a good undercard? Can we? I know y'all think Mexican fans drive it, but us as black fans, we spend $80. Can we get some young black talent on these undercards instead of uh, 
It's 35 losses on that undercard. Look at it. It's an average of 35 losses for the, the people fighting on the undercard. That's crazy. A pay-per-view undercard with 35 losses. That's insane. I don't even know who's on the undercard. I thought Ryan, uh, no, the Ryan Carl is on the other one. I don't know who's on the on the on the on the Garcia undercard. No, I don't know who's on the Garcia undercard. Yeah. Message, we got a message. We got a super uh, chat Ken from Stone. Ken Stone. Go for it. I'm gonna look up the undercard. He got yeah. me interested. Ken Stone, put Garcia Campbell in the UK and collect the pay per view. What do you guys think about that? Again, I mean, Ken it's, Stone. It's put gonna be pay per view anyway. In the UK, huh? It's gonna be pay per view anyway because yeah. because uh, the UK ain't getting it for free. How they gonna get it? They don't got no the zone for UK, not yet. Unless they launching it with this fight. Yeah, that could be something that breaks because remember they were supposed to launch in the UK. Uh, I, he he has me interested now. I'm about to check who's on his undercard that he's bashing. Who's on there? Let me go to the next caller. Sure. We're going to sure. Steve in Chicago. Steve, remember you also have uh, 704's Boomerang if you want it. Is that Gar- Garcia hey, Campbell? Daddy, this is Dollar Beat. I drink soda, I eat pizza, I hang out with chicks all day. These fighters still can't beat me. They fighting every day, they ain't gaining gym every day. Just give me six weeks, and I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, y
slash picker you are. Let's go to Boomerang. It's been a minute. I said this bitch on fire hotter than a throwaway. I need my money now. No extra day. No extra Your day. time's up. Coons ready. Ain't no other way. It ain't no other way. That's all I got. I say what I mean. Do what I say. I pray my chopper full of stone spray. No intrigue. Oh, I was about to say, you still in Mexico? Yeah, I'm still in Mexico, though. You know what I mean? Damn. Yeah, that's yeah. a long video it's... shoot, champ. <laughs> nah, I ain't here for the video shoot, man. I'm getting... I told you I'm getting the bread, man. Yeah. Yo, Yo yeah. this song available on iTunes? Nah, man. Uh, I'm going to be releasing it probably in the next two weeks, man. I'm waiting for the, uh, the, the, cover, the artwork to get finished. I really like this song. Appreciate it's it. Fire, Appreciate man. it's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. We got it in rotation in the A in all the strip clubs. So, you know, we doing that. But yeah, man, I, I missed out on most of the show. I just caught the end. So, I, but I see that they moved the uh, the Errol Spence and the uh, Danny Garcia fight to what December fourth, fifth, fifth. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to go to that fight. I'm gonna try to go get some good tickets to that one, but. uh that's it, man. I, did you see uh, uh, my my boy Brandon uh, Lee fight uh, yesterday? Nah, man. Nah, that shit snuck up on me on a Wednesday, bro. I ain't know her. You ain't been calling to even remind yeah. nobody. I promise you, I ain't even see Conwell. I did not know. I got Damn, an email yeah. with the results. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, man. Nah, I be... I be I be busy by the time I I I be free man y'all be off the air most of the time. But yeah, nah he look good man. Like I said, him and Boots man they they the next wave along with Haney and the mother boys man. But that's it. That's all I got man. Just saying what's up to y'all. All right, yo, all right. definitely get the playback though man. Cunningham was uh talking about his pound for pound one and two. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. All right. Uh, we going to New Orleans. What up? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you a young fella, and he comes from the Magnolia. Uh-oh, I know you ain't a veil. Oh. What up, what up, what up? I'm an audio sound. You straight. Clear. All right, all right. That was up. That was up, bro. Like, how, how we get back on the tank situation, bro? Like, Yo, because he a star. He a star. So people keep bringing it up because it was a show earlier. They probably didn't get the call in and get get it off their chest. Man, Little Ella B said that, bro. Tank, he the, he, the, he the biggest star in the world. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's all I hear Lennon saying, bro. But you can't really put that label on until he fights somebody, bro. All right, we're we going to see what he do with with, with, uh, with Leo, bro. But Leo, a smaller guy coming up. I ain't going to knock him. He a champion. You know what I mean? I'm going to give him his props if he get him out of there, bro. But, man, say, Ness, if, if Leo can take that punt, I think that's going to be a hell of a fight, Ness. If Leo can take that damn punch, though, Say, bro, I don't, I don't, man, man, Tank, Tank had to be in the best shape of his life. For real. Like, Leo ain't no knockout of all this, bro, but if he can take that damn punch, dog, man, look look at the punch output. Think about it. Ness, he throwing his normal punch output and Tank yeah, throwing his but, normal But output. is he going to throw them punches after getting yep. punched? That's what we got to see. I don't know. I don't know that, that you're right. That we got to see, but I'm, I'm just saying, if he can do that, who you got winning that fight, Ness? It's going to be close. Think about it. It's a lot. Don't we got to wait till the weigh-in. It's too early to pick that fight. We got to wait till the weigh-in. We got to see what tank, what he look like. Do he look like a tank or do he look like a crackhead? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he going to be sucked down. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. all his mouth going to be dry. And that's all, like, all, you know, the corners yeah, of your but, mouth. But, but yeah, we got to yeah. see after the weigh-in. You know, how, how does he, like, yo, that, that look. He said he good and he looked good. If you look, he already looked real thin. 
Yeah, yeah, he looked there, but how you gonna look at the win? Like, that's a good question. I think he gonna look. I think he gonna look like Skeletor. You know what I'm saying? Nah, because if you if you went in the camp early, then you 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 doing better. You know, you ain't gonna yeah. be struggling to make weight if you went into camp early just to get the weight off. So if you if you did a a 120 day camp or or a 90 day camp, like it looked like what he did. The whole first month is get the weight off. You running all of, you know, aerobics, yeah, all that good shit. Got that suit on, though. He had the suit on through the whole training camp. I've been watching it. Yeah. He still got Cause the he, suit on. Because he in shape shape, like his trainer, like his promoter said, tank in shape shape. Man, so so he going to wear the suit to the last, to the, like the last four days of camp? Bro. Like, I, I think, I, man, he, I, I think it's going to be a struggle when he get down to them last three pounds. The last three pounds, man, I mean, it's going to be closed, bro. It's gonna be, I hope he make weight, though. I, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I hope he make weight, bro. But, it, like, I, don't, I, I think it's it's been a long way camp, bro. It's been a long way camp. You've you been you, watching You that? do got a point. You got a point for sure. That's my cup. Hey, man, Tank is star, though. And no spent his whole call on Tank. And that's I, that, I just hope that, that translates. But there's a lot to, to factor in, and that's the way in, man. We got to see how he going to make that weight before we can start picking that fight. And I want to see Leo. How Leo looking, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, Leo, man, he got he's zero threat with the power, man. Hey, <laughs> you hey, know, Ness, I wonder if he's going to have a little bit of more power now that he moved up that four pounds. Yo, Ness, check me out. What if um, you had to, uh, if this was Ryan Garcia instead of uh, Leo Santa Cruz, would you be convinced that he could do a million? The who, Tank? And yeah. I mean, I'm going to be wishing that they make a million, but I, I would be feeling... Still don't think that with both their... their... Yeah, I mean, I, I hear that, but, you know, that's a fight for the future. But what I'm saying is, regardless of who this fight, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for that. I'm hoping I'm for the, high okay, numbers. Was, the reason I was asking is because I was thinking maybe a replace of opponent... Or is it just the times right now is just tough? Nah, man, it's the opponent. Cause uh, Canelo still finds a way to do it whenever he does it, right? So it's the opponent. You just gotta, you just gotta get the right dance partner. You know, people. I think listen, the it. way it works is people gotta think you gonna lose. So if Tiafimo beats Vasil, Tank versus Tiafimo is the fight to make. If Vasil beats Tiafimo, Vasil versus Tank is the fight to make. Yeah. Is is natural. People got to think you going to lose for for it, unless you already on that Mayweather level where even still he had to convince them. He that's why he kept bringing the Mexican in. You know what I mean? Because he knew they drove the numbers and they was not going to believe that he would get the win. Uh, mm. yo, I'm. T it was crazy how people bet against Floyd. It was you know. It hard. <laughs> they bet against Floyd hard. Yo, my Jean Bill, what up? Yeah, it was good. What up? What up? Um, yo, December fifth. I'm kind of happy about it. I'm not gonna be able to make it because um, my parents come for the whole month of December, and they rotate from house to house. Uh, my my sister, my brother, and myself. So there's no way, unfortunately. Um, but that being said. It's starting to look like there is a second wave of COVID. I mean, here in Jersey today, we had the highest count since May in uh, daily cases. So knock on wood, that is, they start going down again. But I don't know, man. I'm skeptical about it. But it is Texas. They're crazy down there. Uh, they might not listen to anything scientists say anyway. Um, and then, damn, so Leo dropped out and, and Tank is fighting Canelo. Two million views. Is that what they're saying? What? What? <laughs> yo, yo, William, my man's bugging me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, but yeah, man, that's it. That's all I got for you, man. Enjoy the rest of the day. Next great show, and um, hopefully you get that house soon. Man. All right, all right, brother. Next caller up. Uh, who do we got here? Majid, Orlando, what up? 
What up, what up, what up? Everybody need to like the video, uh, and hit that subscribe button, and uh, join Patreon for some. I ain't even going to address all the topics. Definitely, I don't, I don't, I don't even go. For, I'm not doing that betting nice thing. But uh, yeah, I feel like with this tank situation, man, I see the best in people. So I'm like. I feel like, you know, most likely he's going to make the weight with that uh, if he missed weight or whatever, that money they taking out or whatever. And with that being said, I think he should just punch this little man and get him out of there. I don't believe he's going to throw a thousand punches with that type of power coming back. But um, I feel like the recipe for success with a million pay-per-views is going to happen one day because if you look at the comment section or anything and chats and everything, everybody betting against them or whatever, you know. So I think, you know, like sky's the limit for that boy because he got more than enough haters out here to do it. But, yeah, man, that's all I got. Good call. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I just got hit up. I hear that one of the best heavyweights in the TBV community is coming back. Okay. Big Supermax. Big Supermax planning his return for December. He said, if the big fish is fighting, so am I. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, let me go to JT. You available, champ? All right. All right. We're going out to New Orleans. So interesting that you come across like a nice guy, but you're really a piece of shit. Hey, that comment. Nah, I'm a piece of fuck you. That's a piece of shit. You know, Rob, we're doing what we're doing on TV. Yeah, I don't care. What's going to do about it? I care, little mother. Why do you have to talk like that? Why are you talking to me the way I want to talk to you? You have a problem? Turn off your station. I'm the best ever. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Ness? What up, what up, what up, what up? Mm -hmm. It looked like Cunningham got you in. You know what about that Canelo thing? You that sweet steak you were trying to um, put on that man. That man said, "Hey Ness, let me tell you something." <laughs> now, nah, bro, but uh, good interview. I like uh, Kevin Cunningham energy and stuff like that. He he sound down to earth. Uh, and also, my question, I didn't ask my question wrong. Uh, I do, I do want to um see that fight. I know they stable mates, but I know Errol Spence and Jamel Charlo won't fight right now because they get trained by the same trainer. But hey, I think that fight that happened before the, he fight his own brother. So that's just how I look at it because when um, Errol moved under 154, you know, everybody keeps saying he's a small 154. I disagree. I think he uh do pretty good at that weight class. And if Jamel in the way, he got to move out the way. But uh, back to the topic like Tank versus um, Leo. Uh, I just think if Tank come in shape, if Tank come in shape, he'll do good. But if, if he had a weight drain camp and losing all that weight, like Cunningham said, I think he'd be a good six rounds. You can't do that against Leo Santa Cruz, a, a guy that punches that much as he punches. But we'll see if that power will last for Tank to, uh, to disrupt that punching on placement for uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Uh, but that's all I got, y'all. All right, all right. Let me go to JP in California, JP Long Beach. What up? Long Beach in the house. Uh, yeah. What up, family? Francis. Wagwan, brother. Wagwan, my. Uh, yeah, I you know I ain't Jamaican, Yo, but my wife. Is, so that's my uh, that's my first that's my impersonation, bro. My wife Jamaican, so well go on, Bridge One. Well go on, uh, General. Yes, sir. Um, I'm excited, man. Um, Tank's my favorite guy. Tank's my my young favorite fighter. Um, Mayweather the Mayweather cosign. The Mayweather cosign is all I'm going off here now. Uh, has. Has uh, Gravante shown some Broner-like characteristics? Yes. But Broner never got the full Mayweather cosign, and Gravante has. And I put a lot of stock in the Mayweather cosign until proven otherwise. Um, 
Also, Mayweather said, hey, this guy can box way better than he can punch. I would love to see that. He's just never had to show it. Um, I don't think Leo brings anything to the table as far as buys. So this thing, do about 300. But for a guy on his first, I think this is Gravante's first paper, not not bad numbers, man. I think if he does anywhere uh, north of 200, it's a success. And again, same as the music industry, I don't think we have the measures for success since streaming has came along. And I think that's how the powers that be intended. That's my call. All right. Let me uh, get to Thank you for calling. Thank Jay you for calling. Matt, talk to us. Shout out to JP. You know how these bitches is in the sport. Total disrespect. Kid has no class, no style at all. I'm a gorilla. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm a gorilla. The smartest thing you can do. Stay away from Derek. It boogie can't be man. the boogeyman if I'm chasing him. You want to bet a hundred thousand on that? Let's bet a million. Easy. Let's bet a million. Hey, what's up? Can y'all hear me? Perfect. Clearly. Shout out to uh, JP and, and Gervante. I guess that's the uh, that's <laughs> the name of the dude who uh, the fat uh, promo they got of his face right there. Learn your favorite fighter name, JP. <laughs> um, Javante. Oh, Javante. Uh, um, I like to do, I have criticized him a lot on this show and on the back call. However, I'm not a big fan of the box skills uh, Floyd was talking about because I don't think they're there. I don't think he has the temper. I don't think he has the patience. I don't think he has the work at the, as some of the other younger guys like a Devin Haney or uh, Shakur Stevenson. So I critique him a lot. But, yes, he does have a lot of uh, buzz because he's in the Mayweather camp. Um, he was getting a little mad that Floyd had Devin in there. And so I guess he good now because he back in there working with him. I'll be watching that training video sometimes. look like Floyd get a little frustrated with him because, uh, you know, Javante is main, uh, normally uh, like a powered guy. That's what he based most of his uh, fights off of his power, and he does need to learn how to have um, a better selection of punches and a better um, just combinations that he put together. Unlike um, everybody else, I think he didn't do a good job in the uh, Gamboa fight. Yeah, he dominated Gamboa, but he struggled with putting punches together to me. Um, in there. And um, hopefully we'll see what Devin Haney does with a, uh, a guy that's over the hill in um, Gamboa. Looking forward to uh, to do the comparison, but on to the next subject. Arrow, uh, yeah, shout out to Arrow. I'm glad EJ made the uh, our big fish, uh, uh, no smoke junior, our strap season junior. Because maybe um, since he back on his uh, on his uh, work at in his focus, maybe we get them fights. Because he did say uh, he was gonna fight a certain person out of Nebraska, um, and he don't see that fight going past 2021. So it's not since he's back on his weight, he focused and what have you. Let's go ahead and get Danny no look um no look hook out of there with them flat feet. Um go ahead and box him uh and mix it up on him, similar like he did Mikey. Uh I don't know if you go get Danny out of there because that's danger zone if you step and press Danny, because that's when he can land a no look hook. And that's what Danny best at is uh putting that head down and timing you when you're coming forward. So I see Spence boxing him and working, uh, working him. I don't know if he gonna stop him because I don't know how Arrow go come out fighting. So I definitely want Arrow in the um looking the best, so we won't have no excuses when uh, that kid from Nebraska piece him up in the dominating style. Uh, <laughs> shit, that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you for your call, man. Thank you for your call. <laughs> Yeah. Info Joe, what it do? Yo, what's up, TBV family? Champ, what up? What's what up, what's do? up? Francis, Francis the Praying Mantis. That's what Alex Doomsday call you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, first things first, man. Y'all hit them thumbs up, man. Shout out to the boxing god. Uh, we got some cool fights this weekend, I guess. Uh, 
Make sure everybody go and pick their fights on Patreon. We got the Pick 'em League. If you think you know boxing, you talk boxing, you all about that boxing. If you can beat the MVP of last month, Brandon Maurice, get in there. See what you can do. Test your skills. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and who else was that? Uh, Vincent Phillips and uh, who else was that? Who won? <laughs> Big Nick. Yeah, test your skills against them dudes, man. You know what I'm saying? See if you see what you, you really know your boxing. Yo, great interview, Ness. That was one of the best of all this week. And I think it's probably the only interview you had this week, though, I think, though. But this, it was fire, man. I loved the back and forth with you and Coach Cunningham. Shout out to him for opening up his gym for Border Wars again. That might be something I would like. i never been to Florida, so I need to check out my man Supreme King anyway. But uh, I sound like a cool move, though, man. You know what I'm saying? You need to get him an award, Ness, for that. Yeah, Like you man. did... Uh, Hey, I also thought about in the next appreciation night, man, we need to do a video for Call of the Year since we got most of the everybody on there. You know what I'm saying? We uh, need to do a video. I ain't sure. even said this is stainless yet. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, but, for yo, the song. For the song. For the, yeah. For uh, the song, man. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. That's what's we got, up. We can get cast and shoot it, man. We yeah, can do it in yo, the gym. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, no, listen, I'm with it. Content is king, baby. Yeah, that'd be dope. Uh, far as this fights this weekend, uh, I do, I'm going with Navarrete, although I do believe uh, Villa can pull up the upset, and uh, I'm just going for Navarrete, man. I, I think they do going to win. Also, I'm going for Lardy, uh, Steve Pass. You ain't the only one, my brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think he's going to beat Gorman. I think that's going to make the difference this week because I know most of y'all probably pick Gorman. You know what I'm saying? I be having my little strategies and my little edges sometimes, man. You know? <laughs> but uh, join the picking league, y'all. I'm excited about the Boxing Bar Volume 1 mixtape. Stainless done put a lot of work in. Shout out to all my boxing brothers that participated in it. Y'all should, he said he's going to drop it this Friday or Saturday or something like that, right, Ness? Yeah, Friday, Monday listening party. Untitled. All right, that's that's dope, man. That's what TVB bring y'all. Hit those thumbs up. That's all I got, my boxing brothers. Peace. All right. We got Gado. Talk to me. Message. Yo, what's good? You hear me? Yes, sir. Yo, hey, yo, what's good? I'm glad that uh, Earl about to get in there, get these fans in there. I was kind of uh worried when I first heard about it because the dude that told me he didn't tell me that uh it was because of the fans I was like damn some champ in the sparring or what he just very vague about it so I got on my phone to figure this shit out because of the fans so I'm glad for that and then uh you know I think it'd be real good down there for the city of Dallas Cowboy season would be just about over that'd be real good for them down there um also as far as tank goes I don't know if the dude could do a million man but I say this man uh I'm 25 uh the homies that I mess with they know I'll be watching boxing. Every time I get around, that's all they want to talk about is one take fight, one take fight, one take fight. So, uh, yeah, man. He, he be talking about a dude I don't even know at work around my age asking one take fight, one take fight. So, shit, he out here. Um, as far as that goes, um, yeah, I don't really got too much to say, man. Uh, good interview with Kevin Cunningham. He had some good shit to say. So, uh, stay up, TPV. God, though, man, thank you for calling in. Uh, damn, I didn't know you was 25, man. <laughs> I need to be young again, yo. I ain't never think I was going to get old wishing to be young how old folks do. Uh, Seattle. Hold on, we got a super chat. Oh, go to a champ. You got super it. Super chat. Big Super Max uh -oh. Rodriguez. Wishing on a star. Acapella. One more time. For Bud Tenders. Wishing on a star. No matter where you are. Nah, yeah, I'm out. Uh, Mr. PBC, what up, champ? Mr. PBC, baby. Boxingwoods.com. I'm the finest. Canelo talking about he believes he can win. Go to my kitchen. Get the sharpest knife. You cut the bullshit out. I don't care what you do good. I do every fucking thing great. Mr. P.B.C., baby. 
Yo, 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 what's good, TBV? What up? Man. So, uh, Spence has pushed his, uh, his date to the... That's good. Um, hopefully he gets some more sparring in. Um, I can't wait for that fight. Can't wait for the Javante Tank Davis fight. I got Leo. Uh, um, I really can't wait for Crawford's fight, but I don't... Champ, you're breaking up heavy right now. Heavy. I'll, I'll probably just wait on the text from the guys. Uh... For real? You hear me? Uh, yeah, you robotic right now, Chan. Let me try to go back to you. Uh, Davidi in Niagara Falls. Yo, what's good, TVB? Hey, what's what good, up? Ness? What's Yo, good, Francis? What's going on, bro? You on my side, man. Niagara Falls, Canada, man. We got to link up. What up, Davidi? <laughs> what's poppin', what? Davidi? You just a drive away, bro. There you go. You yeah, see where the Canadians at, man? Stand up. Thought there was yeah, some Canadian that's boxing true. fans that's out true. there. But yeah, um, so okay, Earl's fight is being pushed to December fifth. That's cool. I can't wait to see my man Earl. I'm not worried about it. I know he's all right. It's a blessing that he's even still here to be drawn from the car. No broken bones. So he's about to play. Hands on Danny. Even though I like Danny too, it's gonna be a good fight. May the best man win. Um, I got Navarrete. He's pretty sweet. He's been stopping guys, so I definitely think he's gonna wear a dude. I don't think I've ever seen another cat. Hopefully, it's a competitive fight. <coughs> and then Tank, you know, I rock with Tank, but I like Leo too, so it should be a good fight. I mean, I hope they do good numbers, but it's like. I don't know, you know. I, they should do good numbers, but, you know, with people stealing and all the other stuff, you know, it's going to be kind of hard. But people do rock with them, so it should be good, though. I can't wait to see the fight. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see Earl back in there, though. But um, that's my call. God bless y'all. Thank you for your call, brother. Have a good one. Next caller. All right. We got boomerang time now. Stone bone boomerang. What up? What up? Hey, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. Uh, that's good, though. Get the people in there. Get the get the, the guinea pig game going on. They don't have no, no type of outbreaks, man. Like I said, there ain't no excuse. For us not to start getting some big fights, some decent crowds, and as long as the our some governors get smart and can hold down the virus, it's gonna be a few more states that's gonna be opening up. So it's gonna be some states that we never thought of that's gonna end up getting some fights. Y'all be like, how did they get the? Because they they can have a crowd, so it ain't gonna be about Vegas or New York or some of these other big markets at that time. Hey, another thing though, I had to, I'm doing a little running poll. And I asked, so far I got 27 people, and all of them know Tank, uh, 12 of them know Gamboa, and only five of them know Leo Santa Cruz. And they all are like current boxing fans. And then I act, they act, they, you know what they all asked me? They said, has Leo ever fought a black fighter? So I was like, uh, hmm, I don't know. So most of the black fans don't know Leo because he's never even fought a black fighter. And the, four, the few people that know Leo, they know him because they know who Gary Russell is, but they've never seen Leo fight. So that's one of the problems, man. If you want to give Tank that best chance, man, I don't know. I don't know if this is the fight that can get him a million. I don't see 250,000 Mexicans buying a Leo fight. They barely came to his last fight against Flores. So, and like I was talking, I wasn't talking about Tank fight. I was talking about Earl undercard. Like, the total losses and draws is, like, 35. Like, Josecito is the A-side against a guy with eight losses and two draws. Then another guy with five losses and four. Like, come on, man. How are you going to give me a pay-per-view card with the – I know I want to pay for Earl, but I'm going to be doing nothing but wasting time until I see the Earl fight. I don't want to watch uh, Josecito as an A-side against a nine-loss guy. I don't want to watch these – no disrespect to some – give me some up-and-coming – give me cool boy Steph. Give me some type of black – 
love. It was a lot of people complained about uh, the Ocampo fight because it was all Mexicans on the undercard and it was like 12,000 black people there. And it was like 3,000 Mexicans and they was wearing man down gear. So you got uh, super Mex type Mexicans there. They not there to see Seha. They, they there to see Earl. So we got to start respecting Earl and his pulling power and give him a real crowd, uh, a real card that black fights fans can get behind. And that's how he can cross that 500,000 level. But until then, we're going to still be getting 250 because don't nobody want to watch nobody on the undercard. And y'all have a blessed one, man. All right. Thank you for your call. Good call. Good call. Steve, you got 704s. Go for it. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, your interview and talk about some stuff that's been going on with what you've been saying to me. So you see how when you get an interview on here, and these guys tell you that, like, they're not interested in these U.K. fighters and this and that. And then you say, I'm a hater. And you got your chat children. I call them the chat children. You know, typing all kinds of stuff about me. I'm just speaking truth, man. I'm just speaking facts. What, what interview are you talking about, champ? The one you had today. Kevin he, Cunningham? He, yeah. You didn't hear what he was saying? They ain't interested in fighting anybody from over there. Nah, he you didn't had, say that. You be you painting that brush real broad. He said uh, you bank uh, he said so you is. bank for Charlo is a step back. He ain't say nothing about UK, none of that. Nah, you making shit up. Look, I'm not making shit up. The, look, you try you you're trying on this show to reach a, a broad audience, and I get that. But that ain't easy to do in this sport. I'm just telling you how the sport is. The sport ain't built like that, Ness. It ain't. Uh, I have I, no clue what you're talking about. I'm still waiting for you to tell us what Kevin Cunningham said about the UK and they fighters, because I ain't hear none of that. Anytime you tried to tell him to match up an American fighter, he he wasn't. He was saying that there was no interest. They, nobody knows who they are over here. Shit, I'll take you to Aaron. Bro, you're, you're making me laugh for real. You're literally making shit up right now. That's what he said. You're twisting. You're, you're twisting your narrative right now. No, that's you. You're saying. No. You're saying that no. any time I brought up, I ne I brought up Chris Eubank. That's it. I never even mentioned anyone else's name. You keep saying I'm a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm just telling you that's the way it is. Right. It's on audio. They hear you. That's your audience. That's these chat children. They're the ones that agree with you. I'm telling you, you bring, you interview more guys, and you you tell them every. I've been listening to you for three years now. Nobody's nobody's looking to go over there and fight nobody. Why is Campbell coming over here? If he's this super Olympic gold medalist, how come they ain't doing the shit over there? Uh, isn't the UK not open right now? They haven't allowed for crowds yet. Are they having a crowd at that one? Uh, You're saying in Florida, the zone's got these two fights. They ain't putting a crowd in there. Listen, listen. There's no venue announced for this fight for a reason, bro. It's literally well, reported no venue. But I, but I'm telling you, and I'm sticking with it. I'm gonna prove it time and time again. It, it, boxing ain't this worldly kumbaya sport that you make it out to be. It's not. I hear you, champ, but if you think they're not going to capitalize on Ryan Garcia, who sells, yeah. they looking, especially with everybody else starting to do fights. Remember, yeah. <laughs> Bob is doing 250 with Tia Fimo, and no, he's not charging, but that's a step in the right direction. Now Earl's going, man, listen, they're going to do what they got to do. That's a fact. Boomerang. Stainless, what up? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Leo ain't exactly the, the step-up fight for Tank that we wanted to see, but it's at least more high caliber. And like everybody else was questioning, if he can take uh, Tank's punch, then that's a real fight we got on our hands. And we we can really see what Tank's made of. I mean, Pedraza was a good test, don't get me wrong, but... Pedraza ain't had no levels to him like like Leo Santa Cruz does, and his his father's still in this corner too, right? I mean, I know his brother been kind of taking over with the training, but 
if his dad's still there, man, he's going to make sure he keep it boxing, too, because, you know, he he got that, that Mexican in him, so he just want to throw punches. So it could turn into a good fight if, if it ain't already, man. So I don't think we should place doubt on it. I'm going to get it because I'm a boxing fan, so I got to see it. But, you know what I'm saying, I, I hope everybody else does, too. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's on, like I keep saying, it's on us to support our sport. You know what I'm saying? We can't be bad because we don't get the fights we want, but, you know what I'm saying, not even uh, what fights we get. So I always say, man, please make sure you push the thumbs up. Share this in every episode of the Boxing Voice Podcast. This TBV for life. And if you ain't on Patreon, you up in Dejo. And shout out to El Camino. Peace. My Gene Bed. Yo. So I don't really agree with Brandon that now I is gonna that now I is going to lose, but he definitely seems like he's not in the best of shape. I understand he's not body beautiful, but he looked a little flabbier than usual, man. He, definitely a white a fight to watch out for. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going against him, but uh, it could be interesting. Um, but yeah, man, uh, shout out to Coach Mitty. Once he gets me uh, gets me my six pack, I'm gonna take um, Malik Scott's place. Me and my wife doing the same thing. There we go. <laughs> Oh, you crazy, yo. yo! Shout out to my gym, man. Uh, That's a big one. <laughs> J Mac, talk to us, y'all crazy, man. Malik Scott, shout out Malik Scott. Boomerang, J Mac, J Mac, J J Mac. That's a no go. Uh, we're gonna go to Trey in the Bay. Yo, yeah, yo. Oh, we hear you. What up? What up? Oh, okay. I can't. Oh, Hang out yeah. much. Yeah, you don't um, know. For the rest, Supermax can't. You, you on a what? Bluetooth or something? No. I ain't on nothing. Uh, okay. Hello? Yeah, he Trey. fell off, yeah. Trey in the van? Yeah, man. Hey, that was a good interview earlier. OG had me laughing, bro. He was, he was coming after all your narrative, man. Yeah. All your narrative. And I, and I was coming for his narrative. <laughs> it was good, though. It was good. Um, Shit, I was just listening. Really, Uh, that's my call. Get a boomerang and know if he wants. All right. And no. I know. Not a bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. <laughs> yeah, and that's um, some of that fight in D-Town, Pop Ball. If you heard my men now, you dig? I'm going to make sure everything's safe and everything tight and right. But um, we're going to have a border wall of a show. I think I think it's going to be a packed crowd. Like, whatever that capacity is. I can see that thing selling out, man. You know what I'm saying? They gonna come out for the big fish, bro. Yeah. I'm in the building. Good seats too. Right where I was last time. I don't know about the flu. It might get outrageous on that flu now and then. But I'm gonna be on that first, that first section. You hear me? Right. Nah, nah no, man. That last fight was a movie. That, yeah, I've, been, I've been to a lot of fights. That last one was a movie. Well, not the last one. The Mikey one was a movie. It was crazy out there. And see, see, that's, it was packed too, bro. I oh, mean, yeah. forty-eight. They had a lot. Of, yeah, they had a lot of. They had a lot of black people and Mexicans, bro. It yes. was like you yes. said. It was a movie, bro. So I think I think they're gonna they're gonna show up. They're gonna turn up. That's my call. All right, all right. Uh, J Mac, you there? We are gonna try you one more time. Yo, how sound that? Just go for it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I I said I ain't had much. That crowd wasn't packed. You know, they trying to uh, boost up arrow ratings again. 
I seen all them empty seats up in there and all that stuff. Forty eight thousand. I'm hey, that's I'm trolling him. <laughs> you ain't got to correct me. <laughs> that's what for me, you know. Uh, yo, and uh, Supermax for the record, you can't be stealing my shit and then spinning it around and putting it back on me with the wishing upon the stuff. That's my call. All right, all right, all right. Well, that is everyone. Uh, I want to thank everyone for calling in. Uh, and that's GTO, Instagram, and Twitter. Catch us tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. West Coast, 7 a.m. Your time, right? What's your time? You, you, you. Me, I'm Eastern, the same time. Oh, man. oh, oh, because Calgary is what, two hours behind? Yeah, it's two hours behind, yeah. Man, I thought, okay. Oh, you Eastern, lucky you. Uh, <laughs> so then we, we got to say Central then, so 8 a.m. Yo, we out. Francis? Please, yeah. Next up, Sports Talk. N-E-X-U-P-S-P-O-R-T-S-T-A. <laughs> Okay, yo, listen, I'm fried, but yeah, no, next is Sports Talk, 7 a.m. every morning, we do Sports Talk, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, every morning, check me out, next up Sports Talk, all social media, Twitter, IG, you know what I'm saying, and be sure, you know what I'm saying, to smash the like button on the way out, and the subscribe button, I appreciate y'all. All right, peace.